Yes. Yeah. At Doug and all of the right. TV. <laughs> but what else does he have? <laughs> it, it, what does he think people are going to see? I, I mean, that is the greatest clip ever. <laughs> it's baffling. He, Howard, it was so genuine. I mean, he's really hurt. Yeah. About what? That they that they made the whole special about what a fuck up he is when there was other stuff going on. There was nothing <laughs> going on other than the fact that nothing. I mean, what about Ronnie is a, a complete moron on stage. Right, but they, he said they didn't focus on that. I was listening to the wrap up show yesterday, and it amazes me that Scott is really upset with the Howard TV people because they did a series on the Howard TV does a great series behind the scenes, and they followed Ronnie Scott the engineer. And surely up to one of these Ronnie block party appearances. And the behind the scenes show eventually focuses on Scott because <laughs> Scott doesn't do anything at these appearances, which is funny, which is the whole reason he's funny. He never knows why he's funny. No. And then so now he's like, I'm really angry with everyone at Helen TV because you have to hear this rap because they focused on me and, and it was very negative about But what else would you focus on? so silly. It's the reason he's funny. And it was very negative. Like You're somebody your should mind. turn him into a positive person yeah. when they're filming him. I can't believe they couldn't find anything else <laughs> funny. to. Cut. I mean, Scott. Am the I the only, funniest one there? Well, then, Scott, the know, only reason you're a, a, a bit I mean, interesting yeah. is because you're so not interesting. <laughs> That's You've your taken thing. The Thanks. Not Thanks for the compliment. To a new level. Yeah. It, it, it's for you to walk around angry with Doug Goodstein is the mark of an insane human being. You've officially gone over the cliff. Really? Yeah, you're insane. You're insane. Well, it, the behind the scenes was supposed to be about Ronnie's Scott, block party. You'll never be at a block party unless there's something about you. Like you can't do stand up. You can't do singing. You can't dance. You can't. You're standing on the stage doing nothing. <laughs> nothing. You do nothing on stage, and that is the only thing that's funny that you think that you're well, doing something. What do you turn, think you're doing? It doesn't there. have to turn into a bash. You know, for sure it forty five minutes of bashing what, Scott. But what else would it be? How else are you going to get gigs? There's other people involved. I'm not the headliner. You know, no, Shuli's the headliner. But the fact that you're would... that hidden star, the breakout star. Yeah, Shuli goes up and does a stand-up. Yeah, he does. And it's fine. It's funny. You go up and do nothing. <laughs> That's fascinating. There's lots of guys who go up on stage and do stand-up. Yes. There's no one like you in America who actually <laughs> goes up on stage and demands to be paid and then even gets angry when he's not paid fast enough. Right. Takes a lot Where's of talent. Yeah. I mean, you have absolutely no talent. You have no reason to be on stage. And there you are on stage. If That, that should be a 10-hour behind-the-scenes <laughs> Howard TV. They went too easy on you. No, really. They did. No, I don't think so. Well, that's why you're funny. Okay. And I'll never be able to explain it to you. <laughs> You don't even see it. You got to hear this guy. I, I want to see the show. I forgot that it had gone up and I didn't get to look oh, at it yet. You made a big mistake. Well, you were part of the bashing, so. Oh, was she? <laughs> of course. <laughs> what? My Everybody. laugh? No, no. What they, did I say? They interviewed you and oh. you said, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. She wasn't bashed. She was part of the bashing. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know. She was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> she started to laugh when she heard about yes. you on stage. I, it was the best part of the special. I mean, listen to this guy. It's unbelievable. Well, first thing, you know, Ronnie spends a lot of time with Scott the Engineer. He loves it. Yeah. And they said to Ronnie, be honest. John Heiner, Gary said, be honest. Is Scott fun to be with? And it threw Ronnie. He had no answer. Right. I mean, he couldn't. He, he couldn't say yes. Because there's no way Scott's fun. Well, of course I'm not fun. No. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not the life of the party, obviously. No. Life, life of the party. Life is, is questionable. <laughs> if you're alive. <laughs> Barely alive. Thanks. Here, listen to this. I spent the whole weekend with Scott before Thanksgiving. But you guys used to hang around a lot. Yeah. So, you, so you've always been sort of friendly. Yeah. Um, is Scott fun to hang out with? <laughs> be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, it was. It, I'm, I'm getting to sound like him. Uh, no, it was. It, it was fun. I mean, he, he's a little. He's got. It doesn't sound like it was a very good time, Ron. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't put words in my mouth, dude. We had a great time. He was so flummoxed by that question. Yes. Is Scott. Uh, Nobody ever asked me if it was fun. He, he never thought about it before. <laughs> he just goes with Scott. And then Scott comes in and he's upset at Howard TV. And I went, this guy has flipped his lid. Well, <laughs> You're delusional. You need to be locked in a mental institution. <laughs> You're crazy. What is it you think is going on at those comedy clubs when you show up? Well, What do you think is going on? I'm not on? supposed to be Go the ahead. center of attention. I'm... Right. I'm a side act. But you're the, you, whatever I'm a act, side there's asshole. No, but no, you're a side no act. Well, 
You do nothing. It was never. But that's what's it, fascinating. The point was And then never, you're upset when you people point it out. No, the, the point was never to have me do a lot anyway to begin with. But you're getting paid to show up. I'm getting paid to be there. and To, to do what? To help. To entertain people. And you'd get up and you do nothing. And then you're surprised when someone comments on it. That's, and that's what's, why people will continue to go to see you. They want to see you do nothing. And sit there with a big smile on your face and demand to get paid. Yeah, well, okay. Well, I show I have up. demands. Where's my room? And first I need to eat, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I want my parking yeah. comped. Yeah. <laughs> to me. You're the go-to guy people fuck around with. But they may use it as a joke, but it might not be real. In your mind, how much of it is real? A lot of it's real. I mean, you know, this is a perfect example. <laughs> they just they just ran a special on Howard TV about the Ronnie Block Party. Mm -hmm. So ninety percent yeah. of that Ronnie Block Party was not Ronnie Block Party. It was yeah. Bash and Scott. That's and right. Uh, seriously, that hurt me because oh. it was supposed to be about Ronnie's Block Party and behind the scenes, but literally ninety percent of it was Scott's a fuck up. So who, Scott was, so who was doing the bashing? Yeah, who was bashing? Like, Everybody. They they interviewed the the guests, the people that came, Ronnie, Shuli. The producer, Lee. So do you feel that... Anybody th they, they could find. Do you feel that, th that what they did is unfair that and, you're, was not unf that per and that, you're not that person? That, you know, I get it. I'm not, you know, I'm not an exciting person that's, you know, the life of the party, obviously. So, hey, it, it, whatever. If they don't want to hang out with me, fine. That's fine. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't get crazy about it. <laughs> He's not. That's, they're missing out, not me. Oh, what are they yeah. missing out on? On the fun that is yeah. Scott. Mr. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I heard like he's. If your life gets too exciting and you need to come down a little, you hang out with me. I hear you're really angry with like Doug Goodstein and the whole Howard TV well, crew. That's hysterical. Listen, why? Because Tell me more about they, that. They, how are you demonstrating that? I felt that it was piling on. Okay. Yeah. How, how did you demonstrate so that? Just, are you not talking to them? No, I'm. I'm fine. Be, no, you shouldn't talk to them. You should be really angry with them. Well, take yourself away, like you said. Yeah. It'll be their loss. Yeah. You ought to. I'm talking to them. I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I I was upset at. You're it. insane. I want you to know that. <laughs> You do nothing at a gig, and you're shocked that people want to talk about that. Now, here's the group of people. They have to put together a TV show of Ronnie's block party. They're looking around at what's going on, Scott, and they notice you. Scott yelled at Howard TV producer uh, Keith. The Keith, that guy Keith. Keith. I didn't yeah. yell at him. Yeah, sorry. yeah, I heard you. You really yelled at him. Didn't yell but at I'm him. just trying All to right. point out to Scott that I he was the him. most interesting thing. Yeah. He when is. they were filming. That's what they do. They have to tell a story. What's more interesting than Scott's name? Go ahead. Keith, I didn't yell at you. I came in and they said, oh, there's another culprit. I mean, because you were part of the, the part of the gang on me. The bashing. Uh, 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 I didn't yell at you. First off, it's not a gang on you. It's <laughs> We point and shoot. You right. do what you do. Right. You know? If All you right, say it, nothing. I do nothing. And the camera loves you. <laughs> it's Scott. It's hysterical what you do. The fact that you go there. I mean... Most people like you, mm -hmm. someone would say, hey, Scott, do you want to make an appearance? And you'd go, of course not. I don't do anything. I, what I would, would be, I do? I would be embarrassed. No, you say the opposite. How much do I get paid? Where's my hotel? What, you know, you, you, when am, why am I not getting paid fast? When am I going to eat? I mean, we you're, talked like, about you're like, you're like J-Lo. I was going to say without the talent, but J-Lo doesn't have any talent. <laughs> I was going to say, like, you're, you're like, uh, you know, you're, you're Tom Cruise without the looks or the talent. I mean... And yet you show up like Tom Cruise. I'm Tom Snooze. <laughs> <laughs> I Shut mean, up. You have demands and you're angry and you have rights. And, no, I, I mean, don't have demands. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. You it's don't even greatest. see yourself. No. You're the greatest. <laughs> don't be insulted. Okay. Because your whole thing is showing up and doing nothing. And don't stop. There's one you point. Stop. figured out a way to make it interesting. There's one point Do on the less Howard, than nothing. There's one point on the Howard TV <laughs> special where Scott comes up with the idea that he's going to dance into the audience. Uh -huh. That's going to be his thing. Right. And Shuli's beside himself because it's the greatest. He's like, yeah, you got to do that. Well, I'm trying to come up with something that I can do. That's the f point. You're getting paid and you have nothing to do. You're already well, on the bill. Right. And you're now deciding what you're going to do. <laughs> and his thing is to come out dancing. Dancing with the boars. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize how funny this is? This is a wild Dancing thing. Dancing with the boars. <laughs> yeah. This is an incredible thing that's happening on the show. Uh, of course we focus on it. And if we didn't focus on it, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be asked to go anywhere. It's incredible. You're not a superstar. I, I, the reason people are willing to pay to see you I, is because you're not a superstar and we goof on you. 
Otherwise, you got nothing. If we ignore you, like if the rest of the world. we start just saying nice things about you. You're done. <laughs> okay. Or go back there and wait for more insulting things to be thrown <laughs> at you and be glad about it. Thank you. I can't believe I have to explain that to oh, you. Oh, it's so funny. No, I get it. I've been here a long time, and I get the idea that nobody else is supposed to actually Scott, point it out. The greatest accomplishment in my career is making you famous so that people care about you. And you have. Yeah. It, it's remarkable that anyone would pay. Like, that's why Robin was laughing. When she heard someone paid $35 <laughs> to go backstage and meet you. They're coming to see me Well, they're coming alone. to see you and uh, Ronnie. Yeah, okay. Two of the biggest <laughs> bores on the planet. No, they're coming. It's not and, just. Ronnie's been going around now and doing red carpet interviews because yeah. some maniac wants to give him a talk show. Right. And, I mean, it's unbelievable. Another guy with nothing interesting to say <laughs> is, is out there on the red carpet. It's a phenomena. No. Nin. None. Nin. Nin. Phenomenon. Well, that's, this, that's this show, and that's <laughs> yeah. you and Robin, and you know. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, you right. Know, yeah. So be grateful. Uh, I am grateful. Be, be shocked. I, but be I amazed. Just went over the top a little. Find and, it know? as funny as I do. Over the top. <laughs> be happy someone paid attention to you. Okay. Go back there and be happy and smile. All right. Tell Thank Keith you. you love him. Thank you. All right. I love Keith. Beg him, I do. Beg him to keep the camera on you. <laughs> Made extra money. Now get out. What a maniac. I'm listening to this thing. I go, this guy's insane. Oh, he's, he's just upset. amazing. He's upset. <laughs> now he demands to be treated better. If you don't want to be upset, don't go do these gigs. How could you actually think that you wouldn't wind up the star of the show? You're at a comedy club or whatever it is, and you do nothing. I wonder what Scott thinks Howard TV should have covered at the block party. Like, what would he like to have seen covered? Well, you know, Shuley did the stand-up. And uh, I'm not the star. <laughs> oh, you're the star, all right. <laughs> I guess explain to me he's not the star. I mean, why? Let me just go there in peace. <laughs> if the Harvard TV didn't cover this, then why would anyone go see him? What is he? Th what, uh, you know what? I could spend four hours on this. Just analyzing how he's yeah. thinking about this. This is culture. crazy. He wants to go there and be treated like a star. And have no one goof he, on well, him. I mean, people are actually paying extra just to meet him. Right. <laughs> him. I avoid him in the hall. And I never step foot into his studio unless I have to record a commercial. And there are people willing to pay $35 to stare at him. <laughs> I mean, think about that. Uh, a guy I'm trying to avoid. It's unbelievable. And he's more interested in eating. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, and then he's like, well, look. <laughs> Uh, I do have to eat. <laughs> and he's, he's, like, he's like drying his hands off from the grease while he's shaking the $35 customers off. Right. It's unbelievable. If you get to meet him, it's not like nothing else. It's worth $50, trust me. <laughs> he should up his price. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Why were they focused on me? Mm -hmm. I mean... Why, why would you do a special on me? <laughs> Where's my dinner? Why is Where's it? my room? Where's my talent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the best one. He's like, I do have to eat. Uh. <laughs> 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 I already have the shitty grin because whenever I go near this guy, I laugh. No, there's a direct message. Insane mental fucking so whack job. It's such a waste of time. That went well. No one knows what the fuck she's talking about. Who's him? She's a, that went well. Who's him? She tried to make a point. That went well. Yeah, you you yeah. go rat like to you, you know. Do about right. This. I ratted to Whatever who? She's complaining yeah. about. To who? Yeah, who, who, who? I didn't say. Dude, ooh, ooh, ooh. this guy is so insane. Ooh, he tells ooh. me yesterday he has a nice private conversation. Did we have a private conversation? Yes. He said he was pissed at Did I say anything to anyone? You go on the show an hour later and talk about it. Okay. After you said, let's not keep it between us, let's not let leave the room. I didn't say a word to anyone. Not even Ronnie, who I tell everything. Well, they were questioning. You didn't have to bring anything up. Let's keep it between us. Well, you're the one who spilled the beans. That went well for you on the air today, didn't it? Fuck this shit. It's all your fault. You can blame me all you want, but dude. He goes on and on. 
You're the fucking you're the you're the, the, the catalyst of the everything asshole. that happened. Not the asshole. I don't call people. It's assholes. funny how you came in here with a camera guy. Of course. Is he just following you around? That's what he's doing. That's the job. Do you not know the show? They don't follow you around. Do you not know the show? Um, B roll over there doesn't follow you around all the time. He does. <laughs> I know he's the follow up. So you, uh, you, I don't know what else to say to you. I mean, I think you get it. Practicing the law. There's not Everybody's much to say. A lawyer. Yeah, that's no, what, what I said to you yesterday. Howard repeated. I didn't say a word to Howard. I didn't tell anyone. Right. Right. Just keep following, following me around the block parties. You know, we will. We're gonna. We're gonna follow you on the West Coast. Of course we will. We're not going to the West Coast. You're tasing us. Yes, you are. You're going to Seattle. You're going to Portland. You're going to L.A. You're going to fucking San Diego. And we're gonna be there. We're gonna follow it. Not gonna change a thing. Ronnie, how do you feel about Scott as a performer during these block parties? Do you think he's uh, asking too much or for too much or being a little greedy, the fact that he's even involved in in these shows? Why would he be greedy and, in, in, you know, involved? Well, sort of what, what Howard was alluding to, the fact that people would pay $35 to meet. This whole idea him. was his. No, that wasn't my idea. This whole, this whole block party thing was his. No. He wanted to make money. This was all his asshole. idea. It's not true. Yes, it is. I didn't you were the one who came up with the idea. Let's go on the road. I didn't have block party. I was going to host, and all of a sudden, it was the Ronnie's block party. Well, that's Shuley. Well, you know. I wasn't my that's idea That's goddamn Shuley. That's not party. me. Well, you wanted to make money and go on the road, right or wrong? I wanted to make money. I didn't say go on the road. Oh, well, how you gonna, was it gonna, they, the money was going to come here, and, and they were going to drop it in your lap? Yes. No, that didn't, nothing. That, didn't that didn't happen. Do nothing. That didn't happen. So we went on the road instead. Scott wanted the money to come here and fall into his lap, I guess. Is Scott's but resentment. it didn't work that way. Just keep making up shit. I'm not making up anything. This was all your idea to make money, correct? No, it wasn't all my idea. That's what Shuley told me right from the beginning. It wasn't all my idea. Well, dude, I'm just telling you, I'm not lying. I'm telling you what Shuley told me. That this was your idea from the beginning to let's get some comedy shows going. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? You're talking to me? Yes. Wrong. All right, well, then you have to take this up with Shuley because this is what I was told. And I said, cool, I'm in. You know, let's see what happens. So, do I think he's greedy? How could I think he's greedy when, when I was under the impression this was his idea? Well, Howard seems to think he's delusional. That well, that's Howard's opinion. That's not my opinion. Well, that's why I'm asking your opinion. Hey, I'm just as fucked up as he is. I'm not saying that I'm great at this. But you know what? We're doing our thing. On the other hand, is Scott justified in feeling resentment towards Howard TV? I don't give a fuck about Howard TV either, to be honest with you. I don't give a shit about you guys. You don't care about me. You, you stick it up my ass all the time also. Who gives a fuck about you? All of you guys. Well, you're all asking about us. You're all about asking. that Fenimore motherfucker out there in the hall and, 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 and all you guys, man. I was asking about Scott's resentment towards us. Who gives a shit about you guys? Howard TV is all about sticking people under the bus. That's what it's all about. It comes from the leader. The leader, Doug Panderide Goodstein. Panderide. That's right. There have been several moments over the past year or so where, where you vented or expressed displeasure with Doug Goodstein. No shit. Is this all about your? I'm only telling him what you tell me about your boss. They were coming out of the inkwell too, right? They would do the for real. Why are you so upset at him? Just because he's the head of the class, he, he should be. Uh, he runs the operation. He's in charge. He's the head honcho. He likes to throw people under the bus. He has to pay for it sometimes. Yeah, and then there's Greg Carmel. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Stop the clock. Don't bring another me in. Another this. bus driver. What did I do? He drives automatic and stick, this guy. He's a regular bus driver. He loves stick. I know. He throws people under the goddamn bus. I've seen him in he's, right, he's right here, my dear. So. No, but I've seen you react this way towards, uh, towards Doug several times. Do you think you're too harsh on him? Do you think you do you think you all of your ire gets directed towards him and it's not justified? No, I think that I've given Howard TV plenty of content over the over the years, and they can treat me sometimes with a little, you know, respect. Respect. That's right. I demand respect. God damn it! I demand it. Do you think you'll step back from this in a few weeks and? Uh, 
you know, the holidays are rolling around. No, you'll, he'll never step back. You'll see, you'll see Doug. You'll give him a handshake. You guys will share a share a drink or something. I'm not mad at Doug. I just had to talk with him, and we're fine. I'm mad with you. You don't get that camera on my face. I told you not to use the tape. I was yelling at Gary as to exactly why again am I working Thursdays in December? Yeah, what happened? How did that happen? Well, I remember it differently than Gary, but Gary had this explanation that where he blamed it all on me. But it, I'm not buying it. Well, tell me because I just I don't saw make, the schedule. I don't make the vacation schedule really. I mean, oh, I is really it, don't. We use too many days. Yeah, but Gary's excuse is that somehow when I signed the new contract. I told him how many weeks I had off instead of how many shows I had to do. And then his story, he claims, and I had to shut up because it sounds like, you know, well, how am I going to argue? I don't have a memory. <laughs> Actually, John Hine. Uh, so, oh, John Hine and you are fucking lovers. Right. He, oh, my God. You know what? You know what? Please. Your wife cannot testify for yeah. you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, but he says he remembers well, that she's, conversation. Well, she's lying. <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> Gary's story is, he called up uh, my attorney and said, well, how many days, you know, what's going on here? And they go, no, 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 this is how many shows you have to do. Right. I just know I was told I get X amount of weeks off. Right. I took the X amount of weeks off. Right. You t they said you have four weeks off a year. I took the four fucking weeks. Well, Robin, right. I had nothing to do with the negotiation, so they told me how many shows he needs right. to do. I didn't negotiate that. I so understand that. We understand yes. that. Yeah. But who didn't know we had not, we had gone over? Well, anyway, I don't know. Gary goes over that schedule. He goes, Bull. Tim. Tim. Oh, Tim. Our Tim, my good buddy. Our, our, goes, he said, we're, Tim's like, you, didn't, you don't have enough show schedule. You need three more shows. But contractually, do you, would, would you want me not to tell you? Who would have known? And then if you violate Tim the, doesn't have to study everything. But what happens if you, if you violated the contract by accident? They violated my contract. What's the difference? Why shouldn't I violate my contract? I can't take They the, won't even fucking give me my money. <laughs> I can't take the responsibility. I, I'm so, how day, come I'm the only honest one? Don't give yeah, I show, I, I'm sitting here making sure I, I don't violate my contract. <laughs> they the violate. contract is worth nothing because in, they don't honor I'm it. I'm in court right now with a violated contract. <laughs> I like everybody's worried about me violating the contract. Oh, we're two companies. We're two companies. Oh, oh really? Oh, gee, in the, the stock market, it says you're one company. No, no, no. For yours, you, we're two companies. When it comes to you paying you, it's a whole different fucking story. <laughs> Gotta go to court. So anyway, we hadn't worked enough days. Well, yeah. So Gary says it was my fault because when he told me that, you know, we hadn't worked enough days that I said, oh, you know what? Because this was all the way back in January last year. He goes, I said to him, at the end of December, just tack on three days. <laughs> Which might be true. <laughs> I remember I remember having a discussion. Oh, your memory. Well, no, I remember having a discussion about the summer. And you You're go, annoying me. And you said you didn't want right. to, you wanted to take time off for the well, summer. Well, because I, because I was told I get X amount of weeks off. And the next thing I know, they go, no, 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 no. It's how many shows you have to do. And I go, what happened to the weeks off? <laughs> I don't get it. So anyway. Well, I can see you saying tack them mm, on in December. Well, you, know, you know, that's 100 years away. I figured we'd be dead by Jan December. <laughs> where you don't even know if you'll make it. Imagine we did our extra days in January <laughs> and then we died by December. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Don't stare at me. Why don't you go back and fuck your boyfriend in the back of the office? Oh, that is so, so unfair. <laughs> of course it is. 
Is that my boyfriend? We're just dating. <laughs> These two. Oh, you haven't had sex yet. No. I don't know. Somehow, like John and Gary came over to my house to hang out, and next thing another room. Next thing another in the same bed. Well, hold on. <laughs> a lot oh, of people you. shared rooms. Yeah, but it's always you, you talk and about John. them. Like, who did Jason share a room with? I don't know. I, it's just you and, Wait, you and John are always together. We're not always together. I love how how John's a genius. Till he agrees with me. Right. He's a fucking gay asshole. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so we're, so <laughs> I, it's my pleasure to be here. And I always honor my contracts, even even if other people even don't. Even if other people aren't. Yeah. By the way, speaking of Gary, he was on rare, he was in rare form clearing his throat today. Really? Yeah, I was trying to eat. And, and now I have this new attitude. I ignore it because I want him to like feel comfortable so he doesn't have to clear his throat anymore. Because uh-huh. he claims I make him nervous. Right. And that's, he doesn't clear his throat any other time of day unless he's in with me. And Brian was cough. Brian Phelan's coughing and Ooh. and clearing his throat. And it's like a symphony of sick people. Wow! <laughs> it's my day. Yeah. Got that. I See, just, we, we should have taken this day off. Maybe it's John Hines' load is caught in your throat. Yeah, that could oh. be it. That sounds really like <laughs> rational. And <laughs> <laughs> what was going on today, <laughs> man? You were, uh, I don't know. You're on fire. I don't think <laughs> it was on fire. Brian, you don't think you're on fire? No, I'll tell you what. Ha- I'll t- Brian, I will tell you one. I will tell you one thing that happened though. Yeah, because I wasn't. Putting I, any I didn't think it was on fire. Yeah. And then I saw you write it down. Oh, and yeah. Then I got on fire. I tried to act like I wasn't writing. Yeah, yeah. It down. You're not That's that really good at it. That's really funny. So you do have that reaction the oh, moment yeah. he notices. I it. saw. It, I saw him write something down. <laughs> I didn't see what I wrote. But I didn't see what it said. You know what? I tried to act like I wasn't writing it down, but I wrote trying. Trying not to react to Gary's and Brian's <laughs> coughing and clearing of the throat. See, so I think I'm a victim of Brian's been doing that a lot this weekend. So now, what is he sick? Does he have to come in here and cough all over me? I don't know. What's wrong with Brian? Brian Phelan's the camera guy who tapes everything during our commercial right. breaks. What? And uh, I don't know. He's especially in there in the morning, first yeah. thing when you guys are talking. Hello. Yeah, what's going on with you? I caught it from Gary. Uh, I got it from you him. stand there and cough the whole time. I, I no, I cough maybe twice. No, I was tra- you know no, what? Take your own it. tape. Take your own tape and get the audio and, and count up how many times Gary clears his throat and how many times you cough. He was he was making me do it. Oh stop! He kept walking by me and doing it. I'm like, oh, I got to cough now, and I, I turned around and coughed. Oh, he was unbearable this morning. <laughs> I, I noticed that too. I oh told, my god! <laughs> was it especially bad this morning? Today I noticed it. I, I noticed a lot today. I'm like, wow. And usually he'll oh. walk out. And he didn't. And oh, he kept he was, going back was like, and forth. Uh, back and forth. Uh, and he was coughing. And he's like, uh, 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 And then all of a sudden, uh, I got something in my throat. And I'm try- I was holding it for the longest time. And then I turned around. So what was your excuse yesterday? I didn't cough yesterday. Yes, you did. You coughed yesterday. Howard said to you, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you sick? No, that, was yes. like, no, that wasn't me. Yes, it was. No, it I have wasn't. a note here. Oh, no, that was Rob. That was Rob. That's Brian right. is constantly sick. <laughs> yeah. Really? Who wrote that note? I don't know. I'm constantly sick. <laughs> You know what it is? You're so overweight, you tend to get sick a lot, probably. I'm not sick. I'm fine. I thought you were going to say you're not overweight. Right. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm overweight. That's, that's beyond the point. What is it, Jason? Ever since you kicked Gary out of the studio in the morning to cough, our office has gotten so gross. It is, it's constant now. Every morning, it's all over. He, and then he, yeah. Sometimes he runs, but he bolts out of the studio because he, he has like one like in the chamber, and he's got to get out oh, of the studio no. before he hocks <laughs> a movie all he over the hall. Today, we went right to the camera. As he walked by the camera, like, right in. Oh, yeah, I know. He does it right by you. Yeah, when he seems to feel if he walks over to your side, then I don't hear yeah, it. <laughs> this is all helping, by the way. Yeah, this is, there's some weird, Fafa Flemmy is like, wild. Yeah, so I, yeah. I don't know. I guess I, I, it was in my head. Well, you know what I've been doing, doing so for much. weeks? I've been like never saying a word right. about Gary. Yeah, because you hadn't mentioned it. Because I've been trying to think, well, okay, maybe I'm making him nervous. You are. And what I'll do is, <laughs> no matter how much he coughs and, and phlegms up, I'm just going to not make an issue of it. But you couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it today. Well, here's, it was, just, what, here's, it was, it was like, uh, uh, Here's uh, what I'm going to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, uh, here's what I'm going to tell you. There's nothing I can do, and this will go on forever. Here, forever. I know. So we're going to have to come to some sort of weird I'm, truth. I, I'm just going to have to throw up my breakfast every morning. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say anything during the, you know, the meeting, because usually you would say something to Gary, but and you, you held back. Nah, and, I, you know what? It's just, it's just not going to happen for yeah. me. And then you start coughing and, and doing I, your don't thing. Don't blame that shit on me, by the way, You Brian. did it, totally. You, you made I me cough. I love Brian goes, oh, it's Gary's fault. <laughs> Gary made me cough. I got, it was in my Maybe head. you lost 100 pounds, you wouldn't cough. <laughs> you think? Yeah. 100? Then, then what's your excuse? <laughs> yeah. I know exactly. I'm thin and I've cough. I, I, it's, but it's not, nothing's going to change. Wow. I, well, I, you I, just get, and you don't do this the rest of the day, you claim. I don't think I do. Right. Jason, do I do this all day? Jason just says oh. you're clearing no. your throat in the morning. No. 
<laughs> I, I, I am not aware. But has Gary been doing this the entire time you've known him? I don't know when it started, but it's been going on a long time. It's mostly the morning. Yeah. It's mo- I, I would say, actually, between 6 and 7. Is, right. Because is, 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 he's is, nervous around me. Yeah, it's something. Or he's just waking up or both. Right. But uh, uh, it's uh. up and down the hall. And it's, yeah. I never noticed it as much because he was doing it in here in front of you. Take Bri- Brian, take the tape of the meeting. Yeah. And just cut the sentences. Where how many? Let's count how many phlegms Gary had this okay. morning. And then count and your cough. I'll count mine. I'll count mine. I think I got two. I'll, I'll bet you two. got at least four. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm Dude, sorry. I'm I'll very aware. Right. So how many am I responsible for if he had four? Uh, I'm going to say ten. One, I'm going to say maybe, you did wh- maybe seven. No, no. How many am I responsible of his? I don't know. That's oh, something oh, you can, oh, four. All of them. <laughs> Wait, how could that be? <laughs> because you got into my head. It's like when somebody yawns, and then all of a sudden you have to yawn. How come everyone isn't doing it? Because uh, you cough right by me in the camera. Oh, shut up. <laughs> anyway, uh, I would bet you Gary has at least seven. All uh, right, yeah, I'll, 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 we'll I figure it out. I can't wait to hear. Oh, he's like, uh, we'll pull uh, it uh, out. Uh, uh, well, I actually don't do that anymore. Now I cough. Now I go, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he goes, right. uh, uh, <laughs> I was going, uh, uh, and I don't do that anymore. Now I go, uh, I like the cough right. better. The cough I'm comes out right trying. the throat. The cough is less gross. The cough is one shot. Yeah, but you hear things going on. I'm telling you, if you knew what was rattling around in my fucking head, oh, well, no, what's going on? on like i really there's an awareness i feel it coming on I gotta, it's it's you're making me crazy but but I, i'm making you crazy. yes you're making me crazy okay you're rude i'm rude yes why because you're pointing out my dude my i'm inadequacies. trying to fucking get through the morning what do you want me to do what, i don't no, know no, give me I an don't... answer you want me to go have a fucking throat operation give yeah. me an answer yeah yeah. Okay. If you can find one that will fit, like if I you, found one. If Fred's you, gonna operate. But like. if you told me what to do, I Swiss Army Howard. Knife. If you told me what to do, I would do it. Yeah. There's nothing to do. Try not to be so nervous around me. How long have you known me? I'm not nervous around you. I'm nervous that you're going to do this. This is this is the worst thing you can do. All you're right. only making it worse, not better. All right. I tried <laughs> this is your punishment. I tried for months <laughs> not saying anything. And it didn't well, work. And it, it didn't, didn't work. Help. It's getting worse. But nothing's going to change. So you might as well do this because this will it, right. keep it where okay. it is. You'll get material and nothing will change. Yeah, well, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> well, do that. Oh, I get so nauseous and when he does way, it. By the way, you're a pretty good throw clearer yourself in the morning. And I know it's yes, your deal, but, but you I do. Yes, but le- i got to be on the air. I know. You're special. Yeah. Well, well, I am. I know. What am I supposed to I know, do? But, but I'm saying that it happens to a lot of people. I know, but just for 20 minutes, if you could control. Like, I, but do you notice? I'm not clearing my throat. Tell a drunk throat. to stop drinking for a fucking hour. I mean, it's just. It's, I clear my throat. During the commercials. And then when I'm on the air, I'm not sitting and clearing my throat. Understood. So I control it in some way. I clear my throat. Well, and I'm not clear. doing it on the air either. No, you do it. So when you're on the air, it's for 20 minutes when you're with me. What, you're just, Go clear your throat for an hour out in the hall with Jason. Ma- I could clear it for an hour, but it wouldn't change when I came in here. That's do, what I'm saying. Do you think I want I to do control, this? Yeah, how come I can control it when I'm on my You're special. I guess I am. You are. For 20 minutes, I'm just asking you to get it together. I have no Drink control. Drink hot water before you come in. I have no control. I've done all that. That's all. all, right. that all... I bet you haven't drunk. You haven't had hot water. Not this morning, but no. I tried that for a while. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, we'll have hot water every morning. Okay. And okay. Wh- what you. happens if all that right, doesn't right, change? This is boring my audience. Goodbye. Well, it's boring me. Yeah. Well, I got to listen to it. Well, yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> have you gone to a doctor about it? It's all psychosomatic. Right. So what would I, which doctor should I go to? I don't know. I want to waterboard you. Go to a doctor, but I don't know who. <laughs> and I don't know why, and I don't know how. All right, I, all right, bye. See ya. Go fuck my schedule up. Add extra <laughs> days to me. That is so your fault. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Dr. Sarno <laughs> could help us? It yeah. is an anxiety <laughs> thing. I, I absolutely do. I do. By the way, Doug Goodstein came in. Remember I told you about an hour ago that Gary was clearing his throat like ridiculous amounts this yeah. morning? And Gary said it was like twice. Doug is in the middle. Said it was twice. Yeah, well, Doug is in the middle of editing it. And he said it's every second. <laughs> I, I knew I wasn't hallucinating. <laughs> I told you it was at least over seven times. At least. You got that ready yet, Doug? Finishing up right now. I'm about to give it off to Gary. Gary, are you on? Unhe- like, do you ever eat vegetables at all? Almost never. Yeah. Okay. It's working for you. And the amazing thing to me is, as an outsider coming fairly new here, Jason Kaplan just went to the doctor and got a clean bill of health. His yeah. blood pressure's great. Well, His Jason, cholesterol's yeah, great. Jason's younger than Gary, and believe me, by the time Jason gets to Gary's age... He'll be Fleming. He's going to be, be a mess. Where did it, how did it become fact that the fact that I am sometimes Fleming means I'm unhealthy? My blood pressure is great. My no, you always say, like, you have a toenail fungus. All my stuff, all my stuff is great. Toenail fungus is like, it's like a thing you catch. It's not you have kidney stones. 
Jones. But those are those are things that happen. That doesn't they make happen because you're unhealthy. I'm not unhealthy. Okay. Well, I must be mistaken. I think I'm one of the healthier people in the office right now. Although that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> no, and the phlegm is unbelievable. <laughs> you, hey, Doug, do you have that tape? I didn't just... have it 10 seconds ago. I didn't have it now. Oh, oh I see. Okay. All right. Well, maybe later. Hey, Howard. Yeah. If you want, uh, the uh, coffin clips are ready. Yeah, Gary swore to me he only cleared his throat twice this morning. I didn't say that. That's why I went. Yes, you I did. No, no, Get the tape. I didn't you say said. I, did I didn't. You said, what do I do it like twice? I said, no. no. I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I really didn't. Yes, you I did. I did it a lot. Brian anyway, Gary's back. I had, I had a, a theory that if I didn't bust Gary's balls about him clearing his throat in the morning, that it would stop. Because he told me I make him nervous by bringing it up all the time. So for the last two months, you haven't heard anything about this. I've really been good about it. And believe me, every morning he's like... Because you really did try to lower yeah. the decibel level so that he would be more comfortable right. and this would stop. I just acted like it didn't bother me. But this morning it got to me. <laughs> and then he starts clearing the phlegm out of his throat. Which we learned was John Hines' cum in his throat. Oh, jeez. But anyway, he, he started clearing the phlegm in his throat. And then Brian Phelan, who's the cameraman, starts coughing and, and hacking up. Because you know in a movie theater when one person coughs, everyone or starts... Or sneezes. Yeah. yeah, that usually goes through a crowd. Yeah. So I'm telling... I wasn't exaggerating. Where is that tape? So go to Gary Page 2, first column. First there's a montage of me, then there's a montage of Mr. Phelan, and then even J.D. gets involved. Oh, Thank you. Let's see. Gary Page 2. Now, these are all the noises that are going on while you're trying to have breakfast. Yeah, this 20-minute period. I, I, I read the paper before I come in and stuff, and in about 20 minutes of uh, 6, that's when I begin the process of hearing from Gary, and he starts telling me what's going to go on for the morning. And it's just one hocking up. It's like... <laughs> it's, it's not even like a cough. It's like you can hear the shit in his chest coming <laughs> it up. It rattles. <clears throat> So now he's now he clears his throat by coughing. I've never seen in twenty minute periods somebody clear their throat this much. It's just unnatural. You want to guess at the number? I would have guessed at least seven times, eight times. You did it at least. Okay. Am I close? No. It's more. Yes. Like fourteen? No, you're a little over. Oh wow. I mean, it's 20 minutes, Robin. And I said to him, can't you just keep your throat clear for 20 minutes? And he goes, no. He goes, I never, I never get phlegm in my throat the rest of the day. It's just when I'm around you. You make me nervous. That's why I stopped talking about it for two months. Because I literally want to throw up when he's doing it. But today I couldn't take it anymore. And we're back with the Jack and Ron radio show. And what you're hearing in the background is I'm listening to the phony phone right, call Right, you're tapes. previewing yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm previewing stuff. And we're back with the Jack and Ron radio show, and today, Ron, we have a special <coughs> guest, Dr. Diane Pump. You, you. What's that? What's that? What's that? One more time, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, do you hear me talking in the back? I'm oh, like, my goodness. I'm trying to be calm about it <laughs> and just put it out of my mouth. <clears throat> Uh -uh. He used to just like go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 45 minutes. Self said they did nothing. <coughs> he said the mom was laughing. A noble idea. Then there's these little moments that they're not even in. He goes, <coughs> right. they got those. <coughs> like a frog. <coughs> Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. What was 50 or 65 or 60? Whatever. It was a very bad feeling I had when he was saying goodbye to everybody. Those clips together, if you watch them back to back. <laughs> right. But. See, when JD starts talking, he gives him an opportunity to clear yeah, his throat. Yeah. How many was that? 13? 13. Wow. How many do you think Brian did? Uh, at least three or four. Oh, you can play it and find out. What are they shooting? Oh, we shot this hour TV. How come you don't drive them anymore? I do. Relax. No, I only take them in. Okay. Um, go to Gary Page 2, please. <coughs> I, I felt like I was in an infirmary. Yeah. Oh, it's so, it's gross. If he said compartments, it would have made sense. Oh, I, I think he's trying. It would have made more sense. When JD starts coughing. Ron, it's all right there. <clears throat> and then there's a Medicaid, if you want to finish the Medicaid, it Pete stuff. I mean, it's vile. And, and by the wow. way, I'm trying to eat this egg sandwich I eat. I, it, it, I, I throw it all back up, a little bit of it in my mouth. Woohoo. 
It's like I'm in a TB ward. Are you sick? <clears throat> no, I, I mean, I, I sort of was. I had like yeah, a stomach. Yeah, sort of was. But uh, in my defense, you're done eating by the time I talk. So. I know. <laughs> but it's just it's just one after another. for tw- It's just 20 minutes of time. I know. Sorry. He's been going home early every day this week because he's sick. Is that right? And it's not necessary for him to be in the studio when I'm when 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 I'm here. He and he's sick. stayed out two days in a row. Yeah, I know. Believe me, and we did just fine. <laughs> All right, I won't be in here. Fine. Well, if you're sick, don't be. I'm I, I'm okay now. No, you're not. Then why are you going home early? Because you're sick. That was yesterday and the day before. Oh, now you're all right. All right. I can't. It's a miracle. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> character there's like a an infirmary <laughs> oh oh you don't know you, you're over there in that you are so lucky <laughs> if you ever complain about your work conditions you're in big trouble with me because you have no idea what goes on over here wow <coughs> jason yes <coughs> Gary's known to have a very uh, long memory and hold grudges with stuff like this. Are you fearful that... No. Gary and I are, are great friends and have a great relationship. And uh, I'm telling the truth. Uh, Gary flums it up in the hall. He knows it. I know it. We all know it. And this is important, though, because this can hopefully eliminate this disgusting act in the back office. Well, no. It, it doesn't sound like it will because it sounds like Gary's saying, look, this is who I am. I'm a flummy guy in the morning and uh, deal with it. So... Um, it's fine, but I'm, I'm just glad that people knew because it, it just, I don't know, if, the fact that people know now that he's just flumming it up in the office makes me feel better than before when I just sat there and silently shuddered my shoulders as he flummed around the office. So he, he clearly views the back office as the lesser of two evils. I mean, no, he's know. been told by Howard, don't <laughs> flum it up in the studio. Where else is he going to go? <laughs> but the best, like I'm saying, like a bathroom would be probably most appropriate. That would make sense if, if all it was was Gary going into the bathroom and clearing his throat then yeah, he should be doing it. But I don't think it is. I think he clears his throat and then starts talking and then it gets all flummed up again because he'll be in there. Sorry, I'm just listening to the radio. He'll be in there pitching a Howard and then he'll flam and he'll come out and he'll flam up some more and he'll go back in and then he'll pitch and then the flam comes back. So it's like a factory. He's got a factory of phlegm just constantly a, working. He needs a spittoon of sorts. He, and he says there's no way to fix that, but I, I think there's certain foods you can eat to help with that. Like, you're not supposed to have milk or something. I don't know. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, get muc- mucinex might help. You know, product placement. Some hot tea in the morning. Hot tea? Yeah. You know, there's, there's things you could do to approve. Nice. Yeah, I, I did cough today. I don't usually cough. I coughed today. I had something in my throat, but I was trying to hold it forever, and uh, I just couldn't hold it anymore. So I turned around. I physically turned around and coughed this way so he wouldn't notice me. But Gary will do this. Gary will walk by and be like, <coughs> and like keep walking, and then walk back, and <coughs> you know, and I'm like, you know, what the fuck are you coughing on me for? What is this, uh, you know, like a, a, a tissue that you could cough into? You're not Howard, but you're also not a Kleenex. I mean, you don't. You shouldn't be getting coughed on like that. It's no, disgusting. I shouldn't be, right. So, you know, like I said, it, you know, when somebody yawns, you yawn. Right. He was coughing, but he kept doing it. I, I, I even noticed it today that he, he kept going and going and going, and then I, I guess made me, you know, get something in my throat. So we'll see what happens. I'd also imagine that being a veteran of the crew, you're very aware of what you do in there. You know that Howard's listening and watching. Yes, of course. You don't want to do anything. Like, he'll come in and, uh, you know, it'll be just me and him, and I won't say a word for 10 minutes until Gary gets in. Uh, you know, you know to leave him alone, you know? So you're just aware of everything that's going on, and you don't want to fuck up because you don't want to be called out on it. And I get called out on it. So fuck you, Gary, and thanks a lot for getting me in trouble. Gary. Yes. Real tough start for the morning. Ah, this I, I, I'm actually not as upset by it as I was when he first started doing the round. I, I said there's nothing I can do, so it just doesn't really matter. Do you drink any hot tea in the morning or anything that might break it up? Or might... no, I drink water in the morning. I don't drink hot. I, I did do hot water in the morning. I don't know that that ever made a difference. Right. And you, you, this is something you, you know, I've talked to you about many times before. You're, you're super sensitive about clearing your throat. I mean, Howard's made it into almost a mental issue for you. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. So I, I'm not going to get that crazy about it anymore. He'll just keep doing this. And like I said, I'm not as upset as I usually am because I really do realize there's nothing that can be done. But anyway, he will do roll call. Does this happen the rest of the day or just while you're here? Like, are you clearing your throat and, and I don't think staying I at home? I don't think so. 
So you think it's a? Very I don't know what I don't know what I think it is, but I don't. I no one's ever said to me my whole life, "Oh my God, no. stop clearing your throat." So you recognize that it could be psychosomatic. I mean, some of these. Symptoms. No, I recognize that these guys are fucking crazy. People clear their throats. Get over it. This is the best of the wrap-up show. Wrap up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, it's Gary Delabate. On Monday's wrap-up show, we talk about Benji and his new girlfriend. I'm not saying her name. And uh, this new song that they have out where Benji's totally auto-tuned. And I said that I think Benji's looking for attention. And I said I also thought that his girlfriend likes the attention, you know, because she wants to sell more songs. Benji disagreed. Everybody in the show weighed in. And here's how it went. I'd like to move off of Ralph and Ronnie and on to Benji today because Lisa came in with a news story about that duet you recorded with Elisa. And quickly it turned into you and Howard were going at it a little bit there. Were you offended that he asked you that, why aren't you sleeping with this girl by now? It's been a year already. Well, first of all, it, it, I, things get uh, easily you know, characterized one way. Like Robin said once, and this is very true with the show, things become comedy truth. So it can just be, you know, something someone throws out there and then suddenly it's, it's true. Um, and, yeah, I was offended that he, he decides I'm not a man if, if we haven't had intercourse yet. That, yeah, I, I don't like to being characterized that way. If he feels that way, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, I was getting angry in the moment. But it was more than that. He was also saying how he, and maybe I'm reading between the lines incorrectly here, but he feels you're being used a little bit here with Elisa. And, I mean, I think the question was posed, you know, if if the show went away, does your relationship still exist? And he said no. Do you- well, I, I absolutely don't think that. I mean, you know, we're boyfriend-girlfriend. She's in love with me. I'm in love with her. And it's it's a great, nice beginning of a relationship. Is the, surely, is the news now stopping any stories about Benji and Elisa? Perhaps. I got to tell you, I mean, uh, for Lisa to come off of this beat, <laughs> and not do any more stories. She's shaking like a heroin addict in withdrawals back there. She's uh, it, This was her thing in a weird way. She was obsessed with this story. And uh, I think it's a good thing for Lisa that she that we stopped doing this. And she, can, you think she put too much into it? Oh, yeah. I think she was. I think personally, this is just my opinion, but I think she likes Benji. I think she cares for Benji. And I think she feels that he might be uh, being misled or used. So we should go there for a second because we had this conversation during the break. The TV guys were hitting me like crazy because I wasn't looking at the screen. And they were saying that once Benji said that w- – Benji said something to indicate to Lisa that they were really boyfriend and girlfriend. And they said that uh, Lisa got really sad. The feeling was like her whole body language changed. And I thought they were sad that – you know, I thought they were saying that Lisa was sad that she was jealous – of Benji having a relationship, but they were saying that she likes Benji. Well, and Lisa, I've told you this from day one, she likes to, you know, throw like a jump ball type question in the newsroom for all of us to discuss at certain points. And, you know, a lot of it is kind of weird stuff. But since this whole thing went down with Benji and Elisa, uh, she's been throwing it out there maybe every day. Throwing like, what out there? Like, um, so what do you think's going to happen between these two? Do you really think they're living together? Do you, you know, and it's just so, it's a lot of questions every day. I could play big armchair psychologist and I could say to myself, I wonder if 
Lisa saw Benji, the diamond in the rough, but of course, you know, looks at him and goes, I, I, could, I like it, but I would need to change a bunch of things about him. And then seeing that somebody did change a bunch of things about him that she likes. Yeah, it could have been her. Ronnie, you're an expert in all things, Lisa. Do you think there's a little crush, a little jealousy going on here? I'm not sure if it's a crush or it's she, she's worried that he's going to get hurt because that's what she keeps saying to me. That she's worried he's going to get hurt. She's but worried look, that Benji's going to get hurt. he's going to get hurt. This yeah. whole environment has this thing when you step beyond the box. Oh, you can't do that. That's that's not what we expected, and you're going to get hurt. They just were doing that with Ronnie about the TV show. Uh, hold like, on, Ooh, ben- what's going to happen if all this goes away? But, Benji, you're not an innocent in all this. And I look at like you're playing it in here like, oh, you can't step outside the box. But you want to tell everybody, hey, we're in love. We're doing this whole thing. And then you make that song and put it out there yeah. and act like it- we're not going to get it, listen to it, and critique it. Oh, you can critique it. I think it's a wonderful song. I think it's a great I, but song. I also I think, think it's, it's you, but, it's but it's you not, and Elisa no, 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 no. starving for attention is what it is. Oh, okay. So, Gary. So, fine. fine. No, it is. It's what it is. It's just, I think you guys want to be noticed by the show. I think you it, like that. It is fun. We are both performers to, to get... What are you laughing about, Gary? Because you're different kinds of... You're a performer, no doubt, but you're not a singer. Yes, I am. Well, now you are because you said you are. Well, and I, and I sang a song, and it's recorded, and it's very, very fucking good. Well, that's now, an you, opinion. Everything you said was a fact up until oh, then. You're right. And I don't <laughs> change it by saying it's great. You don't say it by saying it's not great. It's out there. It's a piece of art. You can judge it. It's called uh, Online Sweetheart. Google it. <clears throat> it's interesting, because you never judge anybody who puts stuff out there before. What? You don't. Ju- you, you, you sit in the chair every day and write jokes about... You, you're always judging people, and then when you get judged, you seem to be irritated. I didn't... I was not... I'm not irritated by someone saying... I wasn't irritated by the song being judged. So what irritated you today? When Howard says, like, oh, you know, uh, you're a pussy, you're, you're being effeminate if you haven't had sex yet. That irritates me. I don't think it was just about the sex, though. He's saying that you're jumping through all these hoops, you're making How's all that? these wait, wait, changes. Wait, wait, How's that? wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop the clock. See, now we're Thank going you, to the, I could do this. Now we're going to the vortex. But how, come, how come Lisa wears makeup? No, how come Gary get stop, his teeth stop. fixed? Gary, let me answer. Okay. <laughs> do you find it unusual that I would have fun recording a song? Do you know, how about a yes or no? No. Yes. No, I don't find it unusual. Yes, it's odd that you're taking... I think do you're you, taking it a little serious, and I think, you're, I think you have you, ulterior motives. What's the ulterior motive? To try I, I to get to make, her on the air. To try to make her super famous. Okay, so I, I enjoy recording a song. That's, and, and yeah, we want it to be successful. It's a very good song. I want it to be played everywhere. I don't believe that you want to get it out there as a piece of art. I think you want to get it out there... I think you want to yeah, get it out I there want, for a reason that has nothing to do with music. I, and I think whether it, I it's think being it's famous I think or it's, getting her famous. I enjoy all that stuff. Yes, I would enjoy making money off it. I enjoy getting played. I don't think I you want to make money off it. Just, just, but I do think it's a really great song, and I think I did a really good job in it. But that part you'll have to judge for yourself. Ronnie, did you think Howard was off base when he told Benji that it's not very, I mean, I'm not going to use the words he used, but it's not very manly to have gone with this girl for this long, be sleeping next to her and have not had sex at this point? Well, that's, that's his opinion. He could say what he wants. But in my opinion with this whole thing, with, with Benji, you know, everybody says that she's using Benji, and I don't feel that. Benji knew what he was getting into from day one with her, okay? okay. He what, knew, what, what was he getting into? Well, basically, when he first met her, they were friends, okay? They weren't romantically involved. He was in his own way, but she wasn't. So him doing all of these things, what he's doing, is trying to win her over. It's like me writing a poem for somebody. It's the same thing. We're both chasing each other, and we both love each other right now. And you're, I, and you're I hope in it love. Continues. Yes. You tell her. You tell her that you love her. Yes. And she right. loves you. Yes. She told you that. Yes. In in, in a romantic way or a friendly way? Because the way in the a way, romantic the way. way it came across when she was here. But, but that was before. But that we wasn't started. that long ago. You're right. It it changed. But at that time, I was I was losing weight. She was very impressed what I did. But she thought it took a tremendous balls to get up in front of the press conference. And she even said, if you listen to that thing, like, hey, I do love him. I'm, I don't, it's like, I'm not attracted, but then I get, I get so torn because I, I, mean, I am so into him. Do you think that she's in love with the fame? No, absolutely not. I think she enjoys it, and I enjoy it too. I enjoy her talents. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy that kind of stuff, but it's not, I don't think that's what she's in love with. I, I got to ask you a question. This is something that a lot of guys go through, so I'm not just picking on you. Is there any part oh, the of you? No, no. Oh. Is there any part of you? That wonders to yourself, if I didn't talk about her on the air all the time, would things be a little different? No. I mean, not, I could play with that, like, just in the same way. I'm never, I've never, I never seriously pondered suicide, but I can intellectually think about it. But no, it's not like a, a, a thought like that. When you wear the hats with Elisa's name on them all over the place and to work, is that because you're in love with her? Or is that because you're seeking some sort of odd attention? 
Um, when I wear hats with their name, it was, it's a fun thing. It's a fun thing. But that's, answer the, the question is, is it because you love her so much or because you're seeking some sort of odd attention? I, I would say it's both. I think part of their love is shtick. I mean, she gets she off did. on it and he enjoys doing it. But my problem is you can't, you can't be upset with people giving you shit for this because right. all you're doing is bringing this into the spotlight. This is all your own doing. Like, like for example, Richie Wilson's engaged. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, there's other people here that are in relationships that it's not in the spotlight. There's not people pulling Richie Wilson not, inside and going, hey, watch your well, ass. Well, surely, you know surely, what I mean? I, I agree with you, I'm, it, but I can still have an emotional reaction when I think people are being mean about something or lying about But the only reason something. they have an opinion is no, because no, that's, you that, brought that's it fine. out there. That's fine. But there's you you, you can have – you're you're right. I, I would expect, you know, reaction to it and opinions about it. But I'm not going to, you know – I'm going to react too when they bring their things out. So here's a question I have for you. If J.D. came in tomorrow and said he was dating a girl and he went through all the stuff that you are going through, and J.D. came in with a song where he was auto-tuned to death – and don't say you weren't because you were. And it's like it was I, I, that's a, how I sing. There. It's like a fun. <laughs> no, it's, and it's like a fun song. You wouldn't cra- you wouldn't write jokes for Howard about that. Yeah, I don't think. I think some of some of. I think I would do it in a more like I love you, you're a schmuck kind of way. But um, I think you guys sometimes do it in a more mean spirited way. By the way, well, I haven't been doing it. By the way, if um, that's the way you sing. You might have a case against a gentleman by the name of T Pain. You might want to look into <laughs> was suing he him. Me? I think so. Um. I have a question about the the whole sex thing. If so, you guys, it makes such a big deal about. It. First of all, if if I came in tomorrow and said, "Oh, we've had intercourse," if you guys asked me about it, mm-hmm. would it change your opinion? Opinion of what? Of, of this whole thing. Well, I mean, consummating a relationship does sort of bring it from the one side to the other side. I think a lot of people view it that way. Okay. I think the issue more is you being upfront about it. Like if you being, said, being honest about it and yeah, saying well, like, hey, so I, it, it'd be better no, if I did, if I lied about it. Like no, if you do. said, you know what, she's special. I really don't want to talk about that kind of thing. Right. Versus saying, no, we haven't. Yes, we have. No, we haven't. Yes, well, we have. Well, it's hard. You know what? You're right. I would rather probably go that route. But it's it's also like it's very like. Uh, I always have problems with that word. Anti-ethical to the show. Anti what? Ethical. Anti-ethical or something like that. I I, I can't remember how the word's pronounced. Unethical? No. But anyway, it's it's not like the show's sort of format. Like, right. I I would like to. Eat, I don't think to me it's not a big deal. Did you, you know, say? To did talk you say about you something. sleep with her naked? She sleeps naked in your bed. Partially, yeah. Sometimes. How yeah. do you, how do you deal with that? What do you mean? No, seriously. <laughs> how do you, how See, do you, that's where you act how, weird. How, how do you do that? Of that's course, not you a weird question. Dude, no, no, how do you sleep? How that, do you deal do you with that? Next to a girl half naked who you love and you definitely want. I'm assuming want to have sex with. Yeah. So, but, but I also or even just cut. Don't you just even want to like. Cuddle with her but naked? I, wait, wait. I said we haven't had intercourse. Okay. That's all I've said. Like, but we've done everything else. And and I also sensed I could absolutely have had sex at this point, but I also sensed that I could make it happen, but she doesn't want to. Oh, that was the other at thing. At this point. That was the other she thing. Wants to, she wants to take it a little slower. That was the other thing I was going to bring up. I've heard your- I could force her. I know you could. <laughs> I've heard your sex stories from the past, right. and you don't <laughs> appear to be the kind of guy, a 45-year-old man- I'm not 45. You are. No, Who wants to wait. You don't. You you never. You used to not be able to wait eleven seconds. <laughs> no, I've I've well, listen. I'm. This is someone I'm in love with. I'm looking towards a. This is. I I think if it if it keeps going the way it is, this will be my wife. I think that's and, funny. And, and I, I think that's I funny. No only problem. Be- listen, yeah. As like, there's part of me like uh, hormones or whatever. Like yeah. Oh my god. I can't wait. I, I'm very attracted to her. I love her. I experienced like just looking at her. I experienced like love and lust at the same time, which was an incredible feeling. But. I don't have any problem like taking taking my time with something like this. So wait a minute. Yeah. So wait, are you basically saying what you're doing right if, now? If, are you are you sa- you're doing everything with her except intercourse? So are you saving that for when you get married? Is that what you're really no, doing? No, it's just like I I sense and we've talked we openly talk about it. She'd rather take some time with that. Gary, when Howard was telling Benji how he felt, he was one he was being sincere and two he was. It pissed in a way. Well, and I understand what, what Howard makes a good point. You, you guys are, you know, I know like teenagers wait or, or or devout Christians wait, but you guys are sort of at the point in life where you sort of know. She right. must know already, right? So what are you waiting for? Because you know, I. It's just I. I, sense, I was just saying that's wait, his point. I, I don't like to. It's funny. I do. I. I always. 
when I love somebody, there are things I feel I could I could get them to do, but I'd want to wait till it's the right time for them to. But the fact that you guys have been and, together, and I know she did it right. Now. She, she loves making me happy, and I know she would do it right now to make me happy. But I also know she'd rather wait. For what though? What do you think she's waiting just for? A, just a little bit more, just that we're more like. We so she's not love. fully in love with you then. Well, the, I I think because she, she must have a question in her mind if she's waiting. I don't think so. Is she waiting for you to propose? I don't think so. But you never you never stop and think. God, maybe she's maybe she's on the fence because if she's holding this back, maybe she's not sure about me. No, I don't. So she's I don't, sure I don't, about I, you. I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. So if she's sure about you, what is she holding back for? I think because she wants us to just she feels more comfortable to wait a little bit. Maybe you know maybe maybe. Uh, if 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 to you that defines not sure, that's that's fine. But I'm also not ready to get married today. But if this keeps going the way it is, if I you sleep with her, do you have to marry her? If you sleep with someone, do you have to marry someone? No, no I mean her. No, not not under not in America. I've right, we got another guy that has waited with sex with a chick, and that's because he came putting the rubber on. <laughs> Hey, I'm John Lieberman with Howard 100 News, and this Tuesday on the wrap-up show, Benji and I really got into it. Benji took issue with my reporting that a tweet came from his account at 8.03 while Howard was in studio interviewing Chuck Zito. Benji took the opportunity to get quite angry, frankly, and try and school me on libel and slander law. Greg, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, uh, guys, I love the uh, Chuck Zito interview, but I didn't know if anybody noticed, but Benjali actually sent out a tweet during Mm. the Chuck Zito interview promoting his single on iTunes. Wow. Yeah, no, that did come up. The, the wow. news is already working on that. You probably yeah. you probably shouldn't tweet while really? you're working. Yeah, and a bunch of fairies were running the, around the office yelling at me about that. Who? Who are the fairies? Dude, like, everyone that was make, making a thing about that. First of all, I did not tweet. So who did? I assume Elisa did. She has <laughs> She's got to... access to your account? Yeah. Holy shit. You gave her so, your password? So, yeah. Doesn't she have her own Twitter? Yeah. So why'd she tweet on yours? Because um, more people are fun. on his. yeah. So why not? how do we know when something's from you and when something's from Elisa? I don't know. I guess you have to ask me. Mm, I think I'm going to unfollow you now. Or has she right. taken your last name? Because your Twitter is Bronk, right? What do you mean? What's your Twitter yeah, name? Yeah, my Twitter is Bronk. I, I, think I that, don't get what you're saying. I'm saying if she's, married? T- if she's tweeting as you, like how do no, we No, no, no. She put it out. Yeah, I gave her my password. You should probably tell I didn't. Him, I don't give my password to anybody I'm not sleeping with. Really? Yeah, what happens when you guys break up? I guess <laughs> how many chicks have your password, man? My wife doesn't have my passwords. Doesn't? No. All right. Oh, wait. Well. Let's cut through this. Why would my wife have my Twitter password? Benji, you don't see why people would have issue with you assuming it's you tweeting well, should, during the interview? Sh- you should ask before what, you uh, before you like make accusations. Okay, but who would like, imagine? This is, around here is like innocent till, I mean, sorry, guilty till proven. Innocent. Oh, but well, hold but on, Benji, hold, hold on a second. You have a Twitter account that you've been right. promoting forever. Who would imagine that someone else is tweeting for you? Well, well you guys- You're been, a writer. I guys saw you guys running around. I wasn't and, running around. And, there was no running around, Benji. I'll tell you exactly how it happened. John Lieberman came back right. with a printout of the screen of your tweet that's with right, a timestamp right. on it and said, did you know Benji was tweeting during the show and what are your thoughts on it? That's, that's exactly well, what that's happened. happened. So, so, the running so around. John put out this fact that wasn't true. Well, it certainly he looked said, like did a you fact. Know, Right, but that's you should find out before you're 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 asking a question. Well, he, I that, think that you were makes the, that fact I think you were out. the second Assume. person he talked to. He started talking to me, and then you came out during the studio, and he went and talked to you. So he came to you, and I even said as soon to him, as he I could, go, yeah, as soon as he could, and I even said to him, I go assuming well, but, but that this is true. Before he had asked you, he should have he should have checked to see if it's true. Okay. Who would imagine that you're not tweeting for yourself? You're a writer. It's your Twitter account. Who would imagine? Uh, you're right. He's wrong. But who would imagine that that's the case, uh, Benji? Maybe, maybe no one would have. But I don't think it's on me to uh, to to say like, "Hey, guys, I have an and announcement." The vortex opens up. Well, no, but well, I, you guys are- I understand your point. I, I do. <laughs> no, I do. I understand where you come from. I but don't. you need hold on. <laughs> but Benji. You need to take responsibility for it. Let's say it was Elisa. She knows you're on this show. Right. She knows there's an interview going on. I, first it, of all, I don't. Ir- I, it's irresponsible for you being in the. Stick I don't for, think. Okay, so you want to you want to you want to address that? Is it irresponsible for me to give someone my password? And, no, no. Say, is it is it irresponsible for a tweet from Benji Bronk? A cor- you know, as, right. as far as I know I online, think, comes out during an interview I, I don't, going I don't on think that's, I don't know. I do not think that's irresponsible Well, it is. Cause it, it, well, I don't what is it, are there going to be car wrecks or something? No, what, no, but I don't happen? think Howard wants to be distracting from the show wait, wait. while the show is on. Okay, okay, first of all, I don't think she doesn't have serious. So, but yeah, she could assume she I'm knows on, you, I don't, where you but are. you know this about Elisa. Nobody out I, there me, knows. They I think it's coming from you. I don't think that's so outlandish. Okay. 
I, but to, I don't <laughs> think it's irresponsible to give someone access to my Twitter and say, yeah, if you want, tweet that when you want. No, John, Lieber, I, look, John Lieberman's I, here, and he's got paper. Here's the thing. I've, I've been a journalist for many years. I asked you, was this your tweet? Now you've had two hours to think about a good response that this was actually Elisa oh, tweeting oh, it out. Said at the why time? not no, no, initially? I'll, when tell, I, I'll tell you why. Me I'll tell you. Let me, me fucking answer. Hear Let me, me fucking out. answer. Let me fucking answer. <laughs> Let me fucking answer that question. Let me fucking answer. Because I don't like, and you guys, it's the, you, you, I, I, I like you as a person, as, a, as, as an Ashkenazi. Why? How do we know you even as, like him as a person? Huh? It's on my Twitter. As an Ashkenazi? Shit, dude, just get to the point. So fuck you, man. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, anyway, listen. I don't like this thing with the news when they, they come and they assume a fact, and before the fact is proven, they start yelling at you about it and saying, people say it's disrespectful that you're doing this. Okay, then let's pull the Howard TV tapes yes. and see at that time, at 8.03, and, and before that, you, you told me your Jason said this, you, But how is it not reasonable to assume I, I didn't that your say Twitter, that. I didn't which say you it. and but don't, we did don't a story go around saying, a half ago, don't hear me out, saying, hear me don't out. Go, no, we hear me out. Wait, 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 you, you got we, your chance. We did a story two weeks ago of you tweeting during the show, and at that point, you didn't deny doing it either. So let me ask you this. So anytime someone does tweeted, a deny, wait, have, is it let me wait, ask, is it, respo- is it the responsibility, of, no, I'll, I'll answer some shit. Is it the responsibility of, of the person to always deny something if, if they're accused of something? How is it not it reasonable it not tr- to assume? I didn't say that. I didn't say that, but you, it's, not, it's, it's not reasonable to act on it as a journalist till, till you find out more information. Then as a journalist, when I ask you, Benji, I think actually, you, because this. you had already told me you told Jason this, and Jason said it was disrespectful. At that point, I feel you already committed the crime. Hold on a second. I, I'm going to jump into this. It's not un, it's not irresponsible to act on it as a journalist. It may be irre- Hold no, on. Let he, me finish. He, let me finish. It may be irresponsible to go with the story. So right. he's following a story. He's interviewing people, and he now that he knows out the, false information. No, See, now you're How just being. How did it go difficult. out? It didn't go out on the air or anything. You're the you one. You told in Jason fact, that. that Benji, he didn't. When I'm recording an interview, that doesn't go public, uh, uh, as you Jason well know, until we broadcast Jason the story. Jason is another person. You're, you're spreading malicious un- untruth. All right, hold on, guys. What? John, ask You ben- should have checked with me first. Benji, hold on a second. You'll, you'll get to talk. John, ask Benji your question. What do you want to ask him? Point blank, ask him. Did you tweet at 8.03 from inside the studio today? Absolutely not. You are then who tweeted this from your account? I'm guessing Elisa did. Elisa what does that mean? Her. I'm guessing. I'm get. Does she have your password? Yes. Does anyone? And do that? you allow her to tweet on your behalf regularly? Uh, the last uh, like week or so. Yeah. Did she ask you if she could tweet out this link to iTunes during the show? No. So she did this on her own. She told me last night. Oh, I think the i I think the song is going on iTunes soon. Should I put it up on your Twitter when it does? I said, sure. So when I'm asking you questions, instead of just closing the bathroom door, click, lock, in my face, I had to pee. why can't you say, <laughs> Lieberman, listen, Elisa has my password and she tweeted it out. I'll explain End of exactly story why. Then. Because you were all, I, was, I was upset that you were already going to Jason or anyone else and saying that I did something that I didn't do. Let me tell you this. I've been doing this a long time, and I think it's reasonable to expect that these tweets it, are coming from your account. Might, it might be reasonable to expect to have, a, to, to have an assumption, but before you tell other people that, which is basically uh, slander. It's not libelous or slander. slander. Let me explain something slander. to you about the law. Slander. It's not libelous or slanderous until it's a in the public intent. domain. No, no until wrong. it's in the public you're domain. Wrong. Slander can be saying Bullshit. to one other person. I can go up to anybody okay, and say- Okay, look up slander, any- dude. Look up slander can be saying okay. to one other person. All right. Your Penn State education outdoes my Northwestern education on journalism. Is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm Jesus saying Christ. slander can okay. be saying it, to, saying it to one other you person. You don't know it. That's absolutely and not true. Uh, are you, right, I, I don't want to hire a debate over what slander okay. is. Okay. Look, Benji stated his case. John, you asked your question. Another theory that's floating around here is, Benji, you knew something like this could happen. If something gets tweeted during the show, it causes more attention. Well, I to swear on my life, I did not think of that. Okay. I, I, now, thinking about it, it says, like, yeah, that is a funny fucking idea, but I did not think of it that way. No. Absolutely So, so if they check the IP address of the tweet, it's going to come up clean? What do you, uh, like, in other words, it won't come back to your computer. It'll come back to your I, computer at home. No. What do you mean? In other words, if they were able to follow the IP yes. address of where it came from, I, it, it will not come from listen, the studio. It will absolutely not. Okay. I didn't do it. I'm I'm assuming Elisa did. 
But what, if, if Elisa didn't do it, what are the other possibilities? That someone broke in and did it. But I doubt that. Why was it okay, okay, Anthony Weiner? No, no, no. I'm saying that. Listen, I don't know absolutely sure, but I'm assuming Elisa did it. Somebody, somebody broke into. She told my... me she was going to do it, and she has my password, so I assume she did it. Somebody broke into my account and I'm tweeted to help me person. make money. <laughs> I don't understand why, and okay. maybe there's no explanation for this, but why you would let her have your like? Why doesn't she tweet for herself and you she tweet does. for yourself? I think it's, she thought it would be fun to tweet as you. Yeah. Well, no joke. Just hey, here's our single. Yeah, you realize it, 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 in all seriousness. Not I have it. some of her passwords too. But I you mean, realize so we have fun with it. You realize oh, now nice. that it puts any anything that you write is now to me questionable because I don't know if it's bad. All right. Or well, you know what? I don't think you should make legal assumptions on Twitter anyway, guy. If you're if you're basing your life on things on Twitter, I'm not saying I'm basing my life on it. It's just like if you crack a funny joke or you crack a bad joke, I'm not sure if it's you or her. All right. Well, then you'll have to live with that mystery. No, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not um, shining Paolo a light Bronk. on you like um, I'm a detective. I'm, I'm saying that as a writer, and you want people to follow you, when you let give somebody else access, it, it, it leaves the whole question of who's writing what I, open and whether I, it's I interesting or not. I don't think it's a big not. deal. I don't think no, it's but a big that's deal. fine for you. I'm just saying uh, that people might look at it uh, that way. Let me right. just ask one final question, because sure. two weeks ago we did a piece of you tweeting during the show. Right. So let me ask you. It was during a break, but yeah. Yes, it was during, during a break. Was that you tweeting two weeks ago when we did the piece during a break? From what I remember, yes. I mean, if, if we're talking about the same thing, yeah. And going back to a question I asked Long earlier, way. which I wasn't sure what your answer was, if this was, do you feel it's disrespectful to tweet as if, the show's going on? If I had been the one that did it during the show on the air, yeah, I would. I mean, if Robin that. did it, if anybody in there did well, it. Well, it depends if what kind of, if you, if you check, if see if it's okay, or if that's the, if that's the ongoing uh, relationship that it's okay. I mean, Gary Kirkman, I'm wrong, but Jason, who runs the Stern Show Twitter, is really the only one who should be tweeting during yeah, the show. Yeah, I mean, I look at my Twitter account during the show for show-related stuff, and I said to John Lieberman, maybe once or twice I will tweet out during the show if it's something that I'm looking for that's show-related. You know, this happened to Robin last year. She... Right. She tweeted something that had nothing to do with the show. It had to do with her charity during the show. But it wasn't her. Then she later claimed that it wasn't her. It was one of her people tweeting. You've so, got precedent. So, yes, you have precedent. Or I have precedent? You've, that too. No, you have precedent. Somebody else was tweeting on Robin's behalf. Someone used the other the same excuse. Yes. See, I bet you I understand how you could be moderately annoyed, but I also don't understand how you could be surprised that people wouldn't jump to that conclusion because it's a very easy I conclusion. No, no, no. I didn't think of that. I honestly didn't think of that ahead of time. But when it happened, I was like, this is funny. And this is funny and, and annoying. Can I, because I actually like John Lieberman a lot, because I think he's like Langford without being a total asshole. Uh, <laughs> he didn't come up and say, Benji's tweeting during the show. He asked The question he asked me was, if Benji was tweeting out links during the show to his music career, how would you perceive that? And I that said, I would perceive that as being very disrespectful to Howard. And then... He asked me a few more questions, and I go, well, if you're saying that Benji's tweeting during the show, then yes, but I don't know if he is. And then he produced a picture that showed a tweet was put out from your account, and I said, well, from this picture, it looks like Benji's tweeting. Now, right. he didn't come up guns blazing and say, Benji's doing this, Benji's doing that, fuck Benji. And he pulled the mic away from me the second you walked out of the studio when we went to break because he wanted to get your comment I first. I think he should have so. checked with me first. Well, he didn't I think if you have two and a half hours to come up with another <laughs> reasonable explanation, wait, wait, John, that's a lot of time. You, so, so now you're saying that I'm, I'm lying? I am okay. saying. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying I'm lying? Yes or no? I am are, saying. Are you accusing me of lying? Now? I, I am saying. Why didn't you explain this when I asked you the I, questions I, I, initially? I, I answered that because one, I thought it was annoying what you did, and two, I thought it was funny. You're and annoyed I'll just let that I'm standing by it. the elevators every morning to see if you come I'm here not, on time. Dude, I'm that's what not. you're annoyed about, John. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I, I that's you're fun. not annoyed about me asking you about. But Benji, let me let me ask. Let me ask a I'm, question. No, let me I'm ask annoyed about the ethics of that, Benji. Let me ask a question. Which you guys might think is silly, but I do make a big deal. Hold on. Hold on, John. Do you think Benji sent that tweet at 8.03 from the studio? I have no proof that he did not send the tweet. <laughs> and it is reasonable to assume right. that when a tweet comes from one's account, unless that account was See, compromised, that, that, that's a, it that's... is reasonable to assume that it came from that account. So now we will check the IP addresses, as Gary oh said. God. We'll check the Howard TV tape, and then we'll come to a definitive conclusion on it. Benji, go ahead. Well, I, yes, you can. You cannot know to 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 have everyone under accusations that they're not innocent till proven innocent is uh, is is bullshit. In We're order to libel or slander someone, it has to be put out to the general public. That's how you libel or slander. If I go to JD and I say, JD, Benji's really being an asshole. That is not slanderous or libelous. I, I think it is slander. He's and absolutely under definition. Ethically, it's definitely slander. Slanderous. But but uh, legally, I would absolutely think it is under common well, law. Well, the 
the ultimate defense to slander or libel is truth. No, so it's, that's will, not the ultimate. Hold on, we're we're getting getting absolutely the, true. No, it's we're not. Getting back it's not the, the only ultimate slander, defense. guys. It's not the only ultimate. Ted, defense. let's take a break. Hi, everybody. It's Sal Gavinelli, and welcome to Wednesday's Wrap Up Show. On this show, we discuss the greatest band in the world, Kiss. Should they be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You decide. We also discussed the Beastie Boys, who I personally love, and they made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we finally discussed little incidents between me and my wife at concerts. Check it out. Well, Sal's here. We were talking about why you got so choked up over Ace Frehley and getting back together with Kiss and performing back in the New York Groove. Well, it was always a, a dream of mine to see Kiss live. You know, I loved. I you really, never saw them live back in the day. No, my dad never took me to any shows. I I, I didn't go anywhere as a kid. I barely went bowling. Uh, so when I was a kid, it's a I'm, tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was a child, I, I I just really, really, I really loved Kiss. I mean, I I was was just it, totally enamored by them. So I remember seeing Kiss like in 1975 at the Nassau Coliseum. When you were a kid, I, I would have. Did oh. they play the Coliseum? Yet you couldn't go. Yeah, at the time, Kiss was very popular. Yeah, and Kiss def- would come to town. They sure. definitely did. Yeah, and, when, uh, and and you just went- I was in fourth grade when uh, I believe Love Gun came out. But no, kids were going at that time. What was your first album? Uh, my first album was actually a would it be a forty five guy yeah. the small ones? It was Calling Doctor Love, and I played it on my Bugs Bunny phonograph, which the carrot was the um, was stylus. The, yeah, the stylus was a carrot, and I would just sit in my I'll never forget my mom's room. And I would plug in the uh, Bugs Bunny phonograph, and I just play "Calling Doctor Love" over and over and over. And then I received the uh, "Rock and Roll Over" album, which is the greatest Kiss album of all of all time. I figured I figured you'd been to like a live or a live too, like you know. Loved the- it, loved the live, a live too. Live is the second best selling live album in the world after Peter Frampton comes alive. Right. So when you heard Howard talk about that, and you went in. What you said it was partially being in the because the, the song's about being in New York City and also your love for Kiss. But Benji alluded to the fact that it was more about you remembering your days growing up, sitting there, I guess, with your Bugs Bunny, Bunny photograph, listening to the record. Yeah, I would say so. The, uh, yeah, it definitely it was a combination of everything. And when I was a kid, I always wanted to go to a Kiss concert. I was never allowed to go to a, to a Kiss concert. And then when Kiss took off the makeup, that was like the biggest kick in the balls I've ever received. I go, oh, you fuck, I'm fucked. I'm never going to see Kiss, like the, the Kiss that I knew that I grew up with, with the makeup, the blood, the fire, the pyrotechnics. And they took off that makeup, and sure as shit, man, they just went right into a... When, when did they take off the makeup? It went right into the creek, that, into the, uh, is the 80s. Was like, that Lick It Up? It was right after Dynasty. Unmasked. Yeah, uh, no, Unmasked was still Kiss. Ace Frehley was an on, and Anton Fig from David Letterman's band did a lot of the drum work on Unmasked. And then... Uh, did, eight, they, did they release the four solo albums when the makeup came off? No. No. And that was before then. Yeah. yeah, the four solo albums were with makeup on. That's how you could tell. I remember because when I worked at the record store a couple of years later, we were still returning them. It, it was, <laughs> it was yeah. insane. It was the biggest disaster ever in the history of, I believe, of Casablanca Records. They shipped out a half a million. No, they shipped out a million, a million. each right. of each record. And I think they took back like three million. <laughs> Aces, Aces with that new, back New in York group was the only one that sold. They, yeah. they, I mean, huge. One of the biggest blunders in the history of music. Ace's debut was on Love Gun, which was shocked me. That was his debut song, but the soul album Make Me Feel Better uh, was um, New York Groove, which is, I mean, that whole solo album was incredible. Did you know that, um, that that's not even his song? Yeah, it's not. It's a cover. I didn't know it for the longest time. I don't even think, I think a lot of kids growing up with Ace didn't know it, but then I found out later on, and no, it wasn't. He also covered um, from the Rolling Stones, Keith Richards' song, 2000 Man. When you were like, uh, when you were a kid and you were like, I want to go so badly. Did you, your parents wouldn't let you, or you just, was just there was a, no? It wasn't even possible. It wasn't even an issue. No, I'm just not going. Did you ask, or were you too oh, afraid? Sure. To, you, oh, sure. You weren't afraid to ask. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking it to that place with all those crazy people. You know, it's every place. My dad. Every, every. I was getting stabbed and killed no matter where I was. Did you not have an aunt or a cousin who you could have gone to? Say no. Nah, they were all off the boat. You know. My aunt lived across the street. Her husband, Minziona, worked in a pizza place. She was a, a stay-at-home mom. You know, my grandparents were down the... Nobody... So it wasn't so much... And my I, Uncle Nicky loved Elvis. Was it about, like, it was more about what Kiss was than, like, oh, we're not paying for that? Or, like, would they take you to any kind of entertainment type things? Nothing. I've never been to anything as a kid. Like, uh, did you go to movies? The circus? Uh, movies. I went... There was this guy named Nino who was my dad's good friend. And uh, after, the, after we would close up the pizza shop, once in a while, my dad would give Nino money to take me to the movies. <laughs> so that was my only memory as, as, as far as movies are concerned. I think we saw Superman 2. 
or uh, yeah, and uh, some other fr- 3D movie back then. Well, today Howard and then Nino died. God bless him. Today Howard brought up the whole Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing, and Robin was all upset about Cat Stevens and how he can even be considered, even though he's not in, but he should be. But then when Kiss comes up, Sal immediately both Howard, Gary, everyone is like. No, I mean, Kiss is, you know, they're a novelty act, they're fun to see live, but they're not worthy of the Hall of Fame. All right, well, you can also augur that the Beastie Boys, <clears throat> excuse me, were a novelty act when they first started. They were a parody And then they rap changed, act. and then and they, they changed. Yeah. Uh, then they became very not novelty. But I think, I don't think Kiss, I, all right, I think Kiss was just the opposite. Kiss came out, they had a different look, they were inspired by the, the New York Dolls. And a lot of people, and Alice Cooper was involved in that kind of shtick as well. But as time went on, Gene turned into a merchandising maniac. But that's not a reason to be in a music hall of fame. No, but I think the novelty now with Kiss is the Kiss casket, the Kiss umbrellas, the Kiss, you know, just these stupid Kiss items that Gene puts out. I think Gene single-handedly ruined the legacy of Kiss with all these stupid things, lunch boxes and fishing poles and all that other shit that they put out. But if you look at Kiss uh, stripped down, Back in the 70s, like Kiss Alive, that was nothing but hardcore rock and roll. It really was. I mean, they, a, a lot of, uh, you know, music certainly alludes a feeling. Kiss certainly assisted in that with the, with the pyrotechnics and the makeup. They brought, they brought rock and roll to life. Kiss wasn't only musically, it wasn't also for the, only for the ears, it was also for the eyes. And I think the combination of the two made them a phenomenal rock and roll band. And for them to be, you know, shut out, it's just, it's just disgusting. It's, it's blasphemous in the history of music. Now, if you had a choice, I think I know the answer. Is it Kiss or Beastie Boys for you? That's a great question. For Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which I think is poorly put together, it should be Pop and Rock Hall of well, Fame. Forget for, that. You know, forget you. that. Like, like I, it I, should be. You can, you've only got one. It's the end of your life, and you can only go see one show. A Ooh. door number one is a Beastie Boys. A door number two is Kiss. Which one are you going to? Wow, that's like a, a Soapy's choice for me. Um, a what? It's like almost like I have to get rid of one. A Sophie's choice. Okay, I didn't hear what you said. Um, wow, uh, I, I you know that is really really hard to answer. Got to pick one. Whew. God. Mm. Take your time. Yeah, take your time. We're on the radio. Yeah. Silence I know. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Um, I. Uh, I'd have to go with the Beastie Boys because they have integrity. Really? Yeah. Because I would have. I was betting the farm you were going with Kiss because it meant more to you on an emotional level. And also, Kiss's live show is all pyrotechnics and stuff like that, whereas Beastie Boys isn't necessarily the same kind of show. At the same time, you have to you have to give credit to the Beastie Boys that they didn't need to rely so much on the on the visuals of it. Now you were president of the Beastie Revolution. We've talked about that before. Yes, I'm prodigy. But with Kiss and the Kiss Army, you didn't take any leadership role there. With no, the fans? I didn't have the. Ex- you know, I I wasn't accessible to that stuff. You did know, you did you put makeup on as a kid? Oh yeah, all the time. And what'd your parents say? Nothing. They let me do it. That wasn't a big deal to them. Were you ace? Uh, yeah, I was ace. I was Gene. And now you know my kids. <laughs> we had I created a band called the Little Gods of Thunder. I put them up and put them in makeup. And Antonio plays the drums, and uh, Aiden plays the bass. So it's pretty cool. So I did that. Uh, you know, the kids got to keep. But now my kids are done with Kiss too. They they, they could. Yeah, know. at my house we have a band called Thunder Road. You know, Jackson's Clarence Clemens and. <laughs> Lucas is uh, Max Hello there, Daddy. Can I be Clarence? <laughs> I'm not even going to get into the band that we have at home, but let's just say it's a trio. Tony, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey, um, I think I know why. And I'm sorry to throw you under the bus, Sal. I love oh, you, buddy. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to take it, sir. Let me bend over and drop my pants. Go ahead. I think I know why Sal got so emotional with, uh, with Kiss, and that's because, like, uh, his wife and him, that's something that they both, share i mean that's something she's a big fan of kiss too if i remember right no she and, came uh, to a concert my wife she hates kids well she doesn't hate them anymore but she's she's come to uh, a few concerts with with the kids i seem to remember on well unlike sal i'm friends with her on facebook i go. seem to remember uh, <laughs> her mentioning on there a few different times how yeah, message her and ask her what's for dinner tonight for me please. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I seem to remember her mentioning how she was a fan of Kiss and everything, and I just figured that was something maybe he was uh, looking forward to, something that they could do together that they wouldn't argue and fight about. You know, they could go and uh, go to a Kiss concert and not kill each other, and maybe he'd get some afterwards. Yeah, the loud music certainly drowns her out, so we do not fight at the Kiss concerts. But she goes, she's supportive with it, and, and the kids loved Kiss at a time. Well, and Don't you guys bond over, like, Elton John or other musical artists? You know, we went to an Elton John concert, and I have to say... Uh, First of all, thank you. Ross Zapin really hooked me up. It's when I first came here, and we were 10th row. We were in the uh, friends, family, and, and um, co-workers section. Right. Ross Zapin did real, something really sweet. Thank you, Ross. And I took my wife 10th row, and we were, I mean, literally dead center with Elton John. He's singing, and he's 
performance was magnificent. And I'm holding my wife's hand, and it was like such an intimate, intimate time. And he sung a, a song. I don't know what it was. It was Daniel or something. And I turned to her and I kissed her. And she goes, oof, your breath smells like shit. <laughs> and that's the only thing I can remember from that whole night. That's very sweet. But Elton John kind of brought us together. We've gone to a Billy Joel concert. Her parents got into a fight on the way there. They almost hit a pole on the way to the Coliseum because my mother-in-law made the wrong turn. My father-in-law grabbed the steering wheel. She punched him in the arm. So that was our Billy Joel experience. We have an Elton John one and, uh, and Kiss. Who would you say are bands that would cite Kiss as a big influence? Well, Dimebag Darrow from Pantera was hugely, hugely, hugely influenced yeah, I don't like by them either. Ace Frehley. Well, you know, I just, I just didn't, I was not a big I'm not a huge over. Pantera fan as well, but there are so many bands out like who? there. You know, I really, I really don't know. I know about Dimebag specifically, but there are a lot of bands. Okay, for example, Pearl Jam. Mike uh, McCready, I believe his name is. The, yeah. Okay, I don't know exactly the names of the, of, the, of the players. He is hugely influenced by Ace Frehley. As a matter of fact, there's a song in um, Alive, the solo was taken directly from uh, a solo that Ace Frehley did, the intros, and they invited Ace Frehley down to Madison Square Garden to perform with them. So Pearl Jam, I, I don't think you could get a better example. When Rush, when Rush broke out in America, they were touring with Kiss. Kiss is that right? Yeah. Kiss made a huge impact with them. Like they would, the Rush guys would go back to the hotel room and write music, and Gene Simmons is like, "Who are these assholes? Like, don't they have a good time out on the road?" It's part of the DVD. And Two then, bands snubbed by the Rock and Roll. I believe, yes. I believe it started where Kiss opened for Rush, right? And, and then a few, Ru- few years later, Rush opened for Kiss. On Thursday's wrap-up show, all eyes were on JD Harmeyer. JD tried to play a little joke by not telling Gary that Howard was still sleeping in the back. And on Howard's show, Howard just ripped apart J.D. He felt bad. Gary also felt hurt. J.D. tried to explain himself. And that is where the show is, folks. Here we go. We should lead off with what Howard started the show with. (laughs) And that was the story about J.D. letting Gary wake up Howard during his nap. And... I don't know if the blame was fair to give to you, J.D. I no, guess it, Lee I, went in there I, I, to take the blame, and Ronnie said he was partly at fault, and everyone was saying, oh, it's my fault. But Howard was, one, genuinely pissed off, and two, disappointed, I guess, a little bit in you, J.D., because he felt like, you know, Anger. he's got... No, I am. No, I am. We'll get to me. We'll, we'll get, get to yeah, Howard Gary's first. here, so I could talk about Howard, because he's not... You know, he said he's always got your back, and in this situation, you didn't have. <laughs> when he's his. not yelling at me on air, but yes, oh, for the you, most part, you don't think Howard has no, your back? No, he does. He does. I was joking. And a soft spot for you, but yes. maybe that that might be gone now after this. He was uh, really be. disappointed. I know, and uh, I feel terrible. I feel terrible. I pissed him off, and. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, and then uh, you know, I disappointed Gary. Now, while you were in there during this, Gary and I were talking a little bit, and Gary said to me point blank, he's like, "Wow, like, like JD of all people," and and he really, you seem genuinely hurt, Gary. Here's why, and uh, and I'll tell you, here's why. If JD's on the wrap up show, yeah, I'll take a jab at him. He'll take a jab at me. We'll fuck around. But I don't think I've ever played a practical joke on JD. The hijinks that go on in the office, I stay away from that shit. I let him and Will joust. I let you fuck with him. I sort of leave JD alone in there. So I was surprised that he felt that I needed to be the victim of one of his pranks. No, I, first of all, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't really a, a prank. Uh, and there was no, like, premeditation or anything at all this it just sort of happened and and I just sort of let let it happen and then uh, you know thinking it would be funny to have it translate over into the next morning and then it just and then whenever but what do you think would happen well, well, is that how it would go ha 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 no 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 I thought he he might he would I, I thought he would uh, it would be like the phlegm thing, you know what I mean? I, I thought it would be sort of to 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 that degree. Not, I, I didn't uh, I didn't think he would be pissed off or like he he you know rail on you like all day or something. You thought he'd break Gary's balls over waking him up? Uh, yes, and, and and mine, but you know whatever. Uh, but I, I I did not. As soon as Howard walked out, and and then you know he said you know told Gary to be quiet, and then he looked at me and goes, JD, come on. I was like, oh fuck me. So, <laughs> so did you know it backfired right then? I the, I had I I I it just it was like oh shit. And then and then when we walked in this morning, 
Uh, he called me a prick and an asshole. And then, you know, then, you know, ugh. and then when, and then when Ronnie said the thing where I said it'd be funny for Gary to get uh, yelled at, and Gary goes, oh, uh, oh, man, really? And I was like, fuck. It just, it, it just sort of, it just all went to hell. Well, what hurt more, the disappointment that <laughs> Howard showed or the disappointment that Gary showed? Both, because I, because there's been these, these sort of years or whatever of, 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 I guess, trust or whatever and sort of, I, I try not to rock the boat, and then you know I, I ended up rocking the boat by not doing something, and uh, you know. Just now, do you do you feel, I, do you feel that that you, <laughs> are you? Which is fine. I don't. Th- it's like listen. In the scheme of things, it was that big of a deal. No, but like, do you feel? Are you more like hurt that they are like disappointed in you, or do you now look back and say, oh, I did the wrong thing? Both. I, you know, I, I, uh, there is as dumb as, well, it's not dumb, but, uh, there is a, res- uh, I feel I've taken a responsibility into myself having an office next to Howard. I realize after, uh, you know, to show how important he gets his, his, you know, quote unquote work done. So with a close, <laughs> of, with a close office comes great responsibility. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and 99% of the time. I I've, I'm usually good at you know quieting people down and stuff, and I go out of my way to tell someone down the hall to be quiet, and then you know, and, and yeah, but, I, it is, but it isn't your job to tell someone down the hall to be quiet. It or sort that, of is. Or, or I does think. that fall? Yeah. Uh, well, who's responsible for the hallway? It, 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 well, everybody's responsible for themselves. But I I, I want to start by saying first of all. Uh, the whole thing's on tape, which is great because I was taping it for Howard TV. Yeah. So Howard goes out of his office and the camera's turning around. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't even think Howard was still there. I think I said this on the air this morning, but we were doing pickup shots from a bit that we're doing for me giving a tour of the studio that's going to run on Howard TV. So I finished the wrap-up show and I said, okay, I'm ready to do it. And they said, let's go. But nobody said, oh, by the way, keep it down in the halls. Howard's uh, uh, Howard's still here. I didn't think Howard was still there. Like, we just saw Howard walk by. He, he usually leaves sometime during the wrap-up show, but not always. And so, on top of that, I was only supposed to go to Richard and Sal's office because the day we shot it, they weren't there. But I realized while we were doing it, the day we shot it, J.D. wasn't there. He went home. Uh, no, no, I was there. We had, we had shot. That was another thing. Like, he, he was redoing something that he had already done. See, I forgot. I thought that was. I thought yeah. you weren't there that day. So, uh, so, so anyway, uh, th- that's what happened. But the other thing that was interesting was I went right back to my office. And I called Howard, and I got his voicemail, and I said, listen, man, I'm really sorry. I had no idea um, that you were still here. I was doing the shot, and I go, I apologize. I, I didn't mean to wake you up, and I left a message. He called me back, I don't know, like 5 o'clock last night, and he said, listen, man, I got your message. Don't worry. It's no big deal. It's, it's, it's good. Don't even give it a second thought. So I didn't, and I should have. Yeah, because look what you walked into this morning. But now, is it someone? It's not Gary's fault. It's but, yeah, it, it, I'm the blame, and, and I want to I want to bring someone else into this too, who who sort of skated away a little too easily. Ronnie, <laughs> no. we walk down the hall, and Ronnie that, goes to me. He goes, he says, "I told you guys, I warned you guys," and I was like, "Nobody said or warned me about anything." That's my next question. Should you know coming out of here that maybe Howard could be in there, so you shouldn't go down there, or does Ronnie have? Because did you see Ronnie when you walk back? Because if Ronnie's here, Howard's still here. I don't remember if I saw Ronnie when I walked back. Sometimes he's in TV. I don't. I don't remember seeing him. Uh, my my first recollection of seeing him was after when he said to me, "You know, I warned you guys. I told you guys." So did, did but, he but, actually... but but he was in the hallway while it was going on, and he might have said, "Gary, psh, he's still here," and I would have gone, "Okay, we'll shoot this later." So wait, did, but, yeah, did he warn you? Warn no. So what do you think? Do you think he was just? I don't know what he was thinking. He said he was getting his coat uh, because which, it was almost time for but, Which is fine. If he was getting his coat and he didn't see it, then don't say, I warned you. Because you didn't. Well, I, maybe he feels that there's a global warning. Like, yeah. you know, you should know that at that time you shouldn't be messing with that corner right. of the office. And it's not the first time Howard's walked out and, and he's, he'd, he's had to shut a couple other people if, up, if, right, J.D.? If, yeah. if I would have known when we built this studio, I was telling you, John, I went to visit a friend the other day who has a home theater, his apartment in the city, and I was telling you how soundproofed it is. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's not that expensive to soundproof a room. Had I known that Howard was going to use that room the way he does, 
I would have soundproofed it better. There's a special sheetrock you can use that's soundproof, and I would have put a better seal on the door. Well, that's what I, I was told, you know, early on or whatever. I was told that it was, you know, pretty soundproof because they that's what they, you know, they knew they didn't want my work to disturb Howard. But, you know, I guess sometimes when my door is open, it can get through his door, and that's the whole thing. I didn't realize that you took on the role of sort of a, a gatekeeper there and, and keeping people quiet, and, and you assume that responsibility having the office next to Howard's. Oh, well, I, you know, you've seen it enough some, you know, times, and he's talked about it on air, about people talking and stuff, and yeah, yeah kind of. So when you walked out, was this like the worst you felt in terms of disappointing? No, definitely, well, yes. Probably one of the worst, and it, it you know it's uh, I <laughs> I just uh, I it will just not fuck around anymore. I need to stay focused and then realize you know keep everyone to be quiet. I don't know that it's JD's responsibility to keep everybody in the hallway quiet, but I do think he had a certain responsibility since I was talking directly to him. In other words, if it's going on inside the room and he's listening to something, but I was talking directly to him and he's just going, uh huh. <laughs> did, uh-huh. Did, yeah, JD, did a part of you think, like, all right, maybe I should tell Gary, or were you uh, just enjoy, or were you enjoying the moment too much? No, it was what both. Could uh, John, it, it was, it, 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 it was. It was happening, and I was I was thinking, and there was just a lot going on in my head, and I was like, "Oh, is he talk? Is he talking too loud? Is and there's a camera? Should I should I be quiet him off because we're on camera, or should I just let him go? Or uh, you know, this it, it would be funny to have Howard. You know, it was just a who whole bunch who of was things. it? So now that you feel bad, who was it a bigger sin towards Howard or Gary? I think he answered that. Well, well you, I, before you walked I, in, I equal I. I, I I should have quieted him down. Uh, <laughs> what were you going to say, Gar? Um, the other thing that I find really amusing is, yeah, I mean, I was moderately disappointed by JD. I was like, wow, because I, I didn't know that it was premeditated. But No, it wasn't but, premeditated. But, well, it was but, a premeditated omission. No, right. No, no. But, 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 but in other words, if it was something that you thought about, you could have stopped and you decided not to. So it wasn't premeditated, but it wasn't. You know, it, it happened and you let it happen. Yes, yes. So, so I was sort of weirded out by that, but not to the point where, like, I'm so upset I can never look JD in the eye again. So after that, <laughs> I happen to go over. I'm thinking about having all the guys from our fantasy football league up to my house on that Sunday after we go on vacation to go sit in the man cave and in the home theater and watch all the games and just, you know, have beers and hang out. So I went and talked to JD and I said, "Hey, by the way, we're gonna do this thing." And JD, he like he goes, he could hardly look at me and he goes, "I guess if you still want me, I, you know." I, I was like, "Well, it's not that bad. It's not like I never want you to come to anywhere again." And you thought it was a pity invite? No, 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 no. I just it was just you know he he brought this up like two set you know a couple minutes after uh, I basically uh, I, don't, I don't know I get the backstabbed him or whatever. He even uh, I, he sent me I sent him a note about something to pull for the show. And he sent me a note. He goes, it will be hard to look you in the eye for a while, <laughs> for a bit, for a bit. Yeah, I noticed you can't even turn and look at Gary during this conversation. No, I'm, I'm looking at him a little bit, but you know. Who's that? Uh, someone was talking about. Uh, no, I can I can look at him a little bit, but he, he can't know. look me in the eye when we're when everything's fine. <laughs> do you do you feel like you need to get back at him now in some way or is no? Is I'm, that's another thing. I'm not. I'm not. First of all, it wasn't such a great you know prank that it needs to be. It wasn't a great prank at all. But I'm not. I'm not big into. I. I don't like to. We, Stuttering John and I went through this, and it just got uglier and uglier. You know, he stole the Gary puppet, and then I did the bit where I fired him, yeah. where he was curled in the fetal <laughs> position, and even somebody in the office. I think Kathy was her office manager. She's like, you know what? This has gone way over practical jokes. You, you fired him, and he almost cried. <laughs> and I don't want to get. I don't like getting into the. If I get him back, he's going to get me back worse. And one last and question. I probably wouldn't because I am not like that. Well, one last question, JD, on this, and then we'll move yes. on. Do you feel like you've dropped in status in Howard's eyes in some way? Like, do you feel you have to regain trust with Howard now that this has happened? Well, like I said, not just Howard, but uh, Gary. I'm not talking about Gary. I'm talking about Howard. Yeah, okay. Both. Both, but yes, Howard. Because when Howard says, you know, I thought you were my bro, and he goes down that path, that's (laughs) that's a pretty serious thing to say. Yes. Uh, And and I don't think Howard is a sucker. (laughs) Uh, But I just said it just, you know, because I knew he would keep going on and on. You You didn't mean it? 
Uh, no. <laughs> By the way, who on the show hasn't been forced to say that to Howard? I don't know. Richard had to say that to him. I think Sal. I've been forced to say it to him. Sal, JD, Benji probably, you know, t- Benji, tell me I'm an ass, right? Tell me I'm an idiot, right? Yeah, I'm sure at some point you got yeah. into that. Very few people haven't been painted into that corner. Well, Murray has now joined us. Yes. A lot of times you goof on JD, you make fun of him, you tease him, you guys oh, have this boy. little thing going back and forth. I can't but wait for this. Today, do you feel like Howard was genuinely <laughs> disappointed in what JD did? And it's going to hurt in terms of, you know, he almost said, "Okay, I guess JD's leaving the nest." Like, you know, I, I he was. My... It is. It was disrespectful. You know, Howard has taken him under his wing. He's been nice to, to JD, and JD just, you know, stepped on him basically. Right? No, I uh, in that in, in that one instant, I don't know if it stepped on him, but listen, uh, for, right, go ahead. Treat Howard like a gym, and just leave him alone, okay? <laughs> oh. I want you to treat him like one of those value meals you buy and, and, and you know, just treasure him a little bit. I'm so, all glad, right? I'm so glad I stayed for this. Do you think? Do you, I, I'm glad you got that line out there. Do you think Howard was more hurt or Gary was more hurt by what J.D. did? J- Gary should be hurt, too. He hired J.D. He, he <laughs> uses J.D.'s work all the time. He tries to, you know, make him into a somewhat professional producer. And this is how he thanks him. It's ridiculous. Right? Yes. J.D., do you hate Will or Jason more? <laughs> Right now, hey, Will more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why? What I do? I'm just saying. I thought it was a little come disrespectful. Down here and be a douchebag. <laughs> huh? You know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm just saying. I probably wouldn't pull practical jokes on Howard. You know that's a no-no. And you thought <laughs> well, you know you do your own little bit like for Howard pra- TV or whatever well, it, it was there. No, no, no. There was a, there was no. It was bit. a bit. It was no bit. You knew the cam was going back there. You knew he was trying to. Slip I know. It. I didn't know it was coming back until he actually came back. What? <laughs> so why didn't you say anything? Was your mouth full? <laughs> was it a practical okay. joke on Howard or was it a practical joke on going? Gary? How many more fat jokes did you write down over there, asshole? I'm out of jokes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, was Working it a pr- off the cuff now? Was it a joke on oh, Howard off the cuff. Or, or was it a joke on Gary? Uh, say that again. I said, do you feel JD was like pulling a practical joke on Howard or was he pulling on, everyone. It on Gary? He's trying to pull one over on everyone. He thinks he's better than everyone around here. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Shut up. I mean, really. Now you're being dumb. No, but I'm just saying, how. Gary deserves just as much respect as Howard. Right? I do. I, I respect. So why didn't you say you knew that you were just putting him? You were basically setting a trap for Gary, <laughs> right? In that sense, I guess, and not saying something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, and I feel bad for it. It backfired on me, and uh, you know, what am I gonna do? Well, I, I don't know what else to say. You know, anything you want to say to Will? No, I have nothing to say to Will. Why? Ever anymore. <laughs> Getting around lunch, he's getting hungry. He can't think very well. Oh. Hey, cut, stop! Come on, come oh, on! I didn't mean that. Goodbye. Don't leave before the plug, Goodbye. JD. Wait, wait, oh, that's wait! Okay. Jimmy, fuck well. Oh. Listen, come on. Wow. Listen what? Listen what? Come back. Listen come what? Back. I noticed you're not running. Come back. Here. He's got one more joke on his sleeve. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap up the wrap up show. JD, don't go. So yesterday, I was very busy. I did a photo shoot for Ralph. Oh, is this the cover of... Well, Ralph has an app. I'll explain to people. Okay. You're, you're, you're in the loop. Yeah. Ralph. Of, wow. You know Ralph. <laughs> he has an app that's a magazine, but it's a, it's a... It's for your iPhone, I guess. Right. There's no, there's no paper magazine. It's just a magazine on the iPad. Or I guess you could get it on the Android. I don't know. It's But it's an app. So he asked if I would shoot some pictures for the cover of the app. But it's really not a... It's not a... It's a I don't know how to describe so what he's doing. So what is... 
so when the app but, opens with your photograph, yes, up, it'll I come see. up eventually. He, every month they have a different magazine, and it's devoted to all things geeky, you know. So it's a different cover. Yeah, uh, yeah. Every month, yeah, different cover. So you're shooting this month's cover. I, I, well, some month, yeah. Whenever I get to it, but I, sh- <laughs> but I shot it yesterday. We got a location. Ralph was. Is the... Ralph on the cover? No, 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 no. We we shot a. Um, a group of people who are all these people who go to the comic book conventions and they dress up as various characters. They're in their costumes? They're in their costumes. You actually interfaced with people who go to these conventions? Yeah, and they have these elaborate costumes. And I thought it would be interesting to shoot them. Out into space. Well, they're doing... well. There is an article on them that I guess Ralph's magazine is writing. Yes. And I thought it'd be interesting to shoot them in a very... Now, see, this is encouraging this. Yeah, it is. It is. But I, listen, it's, I'm the photographer. Ralph is the, He's ma- the magazine guy. the actual encourager. Yeah, it seems that Sam Simon is involved. He's the publisher. So I guess he's the guy with the money because they right. rented a location for me that cost a couple of Gs. You were in a studio? No, we, we, we shot on a location at, at a, a townhouse. Oh. I wanted to put them in a beautiful, rich setting. So these weirdos. It's like superheroes kind of hanging out in their mansion, so no, to speak. No, it's weirdos hanging out in somebody's well, nice house. I'm telling you what I was doing conceptually as the photographer. Of course it's weird. <laughs> well, you know, I like them, actually. They were all really nice. One guy who... These are the people. Did you ask them where they lived? And uh... I was so busy with the technical aspect of shooting this picture. It was so difficult for me that uh, the first setup was almost three hours because I was having technical problems with my really? equipment. Yeah. Well, I was shooting with all indoor flash because... There's no light in these apartments. It's all Not artificial in a light. Yeah. No, the, the, the windows open up to another building. Right, they're very closed in. Yeah, there's no light, so you have to create your own light, so to speak. And this was rather complicated for me. You know, I'm 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 a I'm not a professional was photographer. Was your teacher there? No. Oh, no. you're on your own. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had to call him though. At one point, my uh, flash wasn't firing remotely, and I was having a bitch of a time. I asked his expertise, my my teacher Doug. And uh, he was helping me, but over the phone somewhat. And then, you know, what could I do? I, I, I couldn't get the equipment work. I had to go to plan B. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. So you're stuck. Yeah, but I you enjoy can't it. You even move this along. I was very stressed out, though. I get very stressed. I want to come through for people because, you know, Ralph and Sam had rented a space. It felt like I was the pro in charge, but I don't have, like, a lighting team or a crew. Like, I'm kind of on alone. my own. Yeah, I'm on my own. It's... It was, uh, and that's a big job for on your own. Couldn't get into the location. Yeah. I needed to set up for two hours, and I didn't have the two hours to set up. Because you get in at 11, and we, you know, at some point I burn out. I got to get home and get to work. You know. Yeah, this isn't your real job. No, but it felt like a job. It felt harder than the radio. I was there from 11 to 5 o'clock. And I couldn't even get the shots I wanted, all of them. Well, I was thinking about you. I said, you know, the thing you really know how to do, you never had a teacher for. Right. Right. And now all these other things you do, you have to have a teacher. Well, of course, because don't forget, this was my job. I went out and made a career out of this, and I had years and years to study it. But you didn't um, know what you were doing. You never had a teacher who said, now, Howard, you're supposed to say this. Right. Well, this you is a hobby. You yourself. This is a hobby. It's not my career. So as a hobby person, I would like to get... I'm, I'm not able to go, let's say, leave college and go hang out and would do menial jobs at a photography studio and work my way up. I've well, got to, you could. Well, you don't have to be. <laughs> I could quit this job no, no, and no, no, do no. that. You don't have to be at a studio to start learning these things on your own. No, you do. You, or you need a tremendous amount of time, which I don't You're have. You're just not willing for it to take that amount no, of time. No, because if I do that, we're fucked. You'll finally We're fucked take here. your best picture yeah. when you're 105. <laughs> right. I need to accelerate the process, so my teacher's very good. Because I was thinking about this. I was like, you never had a teacher to do this. No. This was a life's passion radio. So I, you know, I'm sure if I decided to become a photographer when I was in my 20s, I would have done it a way different way. But, you know, this is the way it's got to be. So I'm trying to pick up things. So anyway, I went and shot all day. And was I also had Ronnie, the limo driver, there for security reasons. Uh-huh. 
uh, you know, to watch and my he's stuff. No help. Well, I had all my cameras and stuff. Well, yeah, he's, you know, he's, I sometimes have him stand there before the models or the so called uh, comic book people are, are in there. Like a stand in? A stand in. He does that. And he watches my stuff and everything. But it was amazing. At one point I'm shooting, I look over at Ralph and I, I thought I was the only one listening to Ronnie. Ronnie's on his cell phone talking rather loudly during the shoot. Uh huh. And uh, Ralph said to me, Are you listening to Ronnie? I go, Oh my God, I'm obsessed. So. <laughs> Well, why is he on his cell phone? I, I don't know, but he's, he, he's something important. So he steps like sort of back out of the room because he wants private time, but he's talking really loud. He goes, listen, I uh, I don't care if she gets 10,000 votes. <laughs> this girl is not going to be hot chick of the week. Now, look. Now, he, he appears to be. He appears to have some sort of organization around his Twitter account. And now he's having to make decisions and yell at people who Robin, are trying to do things. He sounds like you, Hefner. He's like, like he's finally in charge of something. You know, Ronnie's, Ronnie's in charge of nothing. And and now, like, because he's up here, he's got some sort of weird TV deal well, at Fox. Well, you started this whole thing. I did. I did. <laughs> it's all your fault. He's back to and he goes, look. I'm telling you, she is never going to be hot chick of the week. I, I find someone else. I'm I'm looking this over right now. I, he, you know, I, I got to tell you something. When he got on Twitter, he know what the fuck he was doing. He had nothing to say. Right. I said to him, Ronnie, go, why don't you pick a girl every week and, and feature her picture? It'll give you something to do with your Twitter account. He's now worked this into some sort of life. That if he like everything. He's, you suggest to him all of a sudden becomes right. a world. And it's almost like I endorsed it because I came up with the idea. Yeah. So now he's gone full blown into it. And he is so involved with Hot Chick of the Week. It has politics, it has yeah. drama. And then on it's the other be thing. a TV show one of these days. The other thing is he calls Mondays Mund Days. Oh, God. M U N D A Y S. That's his other big thing. And what happens on Mund? Man. Nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing happens on Monday. <laughs> but it was so weird listening to him on the phone. It almost sounded like the you like young big business, like a young when you have to first got started in the business. Except Ronnie's sixty something years old. Well, you should have heard him barking out the. And listen, who's he yelling at. I don't know. There's some. It appears to be a a, a contingent of people. <laughs> like there, it, it seemed like there's an organization. I just thought he would get this like is like a madhouse. Yeah, look, it's not gonna happen. You got to tell her. It was like it was like loud, and he became very very aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see it. Oh, I was like, this God. guy's fine. this guy used to sit at home, picking his ass. He's got a whole life now right. from the show. This all happened when I took him out of the limo and let him stay here every day. Yeah, you know, he insinuated himself into every situation. And then, he, and then they flew, Fox flew him out onto the red carpet out in L.A. for this uh, MMA. There's a big MMA event. Fox is now covering um, mixed martial arts, you okay. know. So they fly Ronnie out there because supposedly this deal is still, this TV deal for Ronnie is in play. They're still talking. Yeah. So he's on the red carpet, and I figured he'll just stand there and someone will just throw him off the red carpet. They, like, who are you? Yeah, they started interviewing him. This is a woman from Fuel TV. You want to hear Ronnie on the red carpet? Sure. Yeah, it's remarkable. Look out, uh, you know, people out there, this would give you hope. If Ronnie can have this happening, right. anything is possible. Right. He's like the Kardashians. No, worse. <laughs> he's not even fun to look at. So he's on there and he's, you know, and, and, and like real celebrities, he's like, uh, I can't talk about this. I can't talk about that. A lot of stuff he can't talk about. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like he can't talk about his deal, his TV deal. You know, I guess uh, <laughs> his agent told him not to Can you speak imagine that it. poor agent? Yeah. <laughs> I know the agent. <laughs> Just shut up, Ronnie. Just don't right. say anything. Yeah, don't say anything and you might actually get something going. I'm, no one can believe this. So, But listen to him on the red carpet. Right. Thanks, Jay. Right now I am hanging out with Ronnie Mund on the red carpet. You may not know this, but he is Howard Stern's personal limo driver, bodyguard, and has known him for 26 years. And I watch this stuff and I'm like, I really don't want him. Listen to the credentials. Look at yeah. how long it takes to explain why we're going to talk to Ronnie yeah. Mund. yeah. And it's all based on my relationship with him. And Usually, you know, Halle Berry comes up. Hi, Halle Berry. We don't have to have it. They're still talking about why we should talk to Ronnie. Right. 
Then the another annoying thing is, <clears throat> Ronnie says because of Twitter, he got his TV deal. That's the other annoying thing. He didn't say it on the red carpet, but he's been going around saying that. I know. I thought he had stopped that. No. Well, uh, maybe he did. But that's annoying me anyway. Because of Twitter. When did, when did you I said that, that all the time when about did I, when, when Twitter did I got me that? my TV deal. When did I say, no, you that used to that, say it every time no, you every day. No, that, that, you ask anybody around hello, here. Hello. You always said it. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the Fox thing. No, I'm not talking about that either. I'm talking about around here. You were saying to me, Twitter got you your TV deal. Stop it. You don't let me talk, man. You just asked me a question. I'm answering you. You said, where did I hear this? I I said the Twitter thing, the TV show was the other one, that sitcom baloney thing. Right. Okay, that one came through Twitter because the guy called me through Twitter. But it doesn't come through Twitter. It comes through this show. I understand that, and I said that to to the woman. When you talk to people... I when I did said the that interview, the what is wrong with you? Why do you I have didn't... to break my balls? You know I appreciate what you do no, for me. No, it's just... You're full of shit, you're man, just, if you say just, I don't. You're dopey. You don't understand that. I'm not dopey. Twitter That's is not... That's why your agents have quiet. I didn't quiet. say Twitter. That's why that. the agent had to tell him to shut his mouth about the TV show. He was <laughs> fucking that up. No, I didn't. <laughs> he talked himself out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, man? Like, keep quiet. Why do you get, and why do you say I was on the phone all day? I didn't say all day. I said at one point one during point, the shoot. Somebody called me. Who is that? Like, who, what is going on there? Like, when you're on the phone going, I don't care if she gets 10,000 votes. Like, who, who do you who talk to? Who are you talking to, to about that? <laughs> Boy, you don't... Dude, I thought you were doing a photo shoot. You're Ralph listening and to I, my... You, Ralph and I were consumed with your conversation. First of all, there was no music at the shoot and stuff, so it was like you're, you, anything... Well, it was like did. being in a museum there. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Who are you talking to? I was talking to somebody about this... this Who's somebody? This hot chick of the week thing. Who's right, somebody? I know that. <laughs> Zena. I was talking to Zena, the girl that works with me on this crap. So she works with you on it. Like yeah, what, she helps me pick girls. What she does is... So you were against one of the girls being Chick of the Week. No, no, no. For, no that's no. what I got from the conversation. No, that's not true. There was one girl who had more... They, like, I had the month of December. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to, to sound the, like J.D. now. If, Come on. Uh, you know what? I'm, Howard TV was covering me shooting this <laughs> thing so for Ralph. I'm so glad. Did they get this? It might be on the tape. Oh I, if it is, you've got to hear him. I don't care. 10,000 votes or not. Nobody had, not ten, nobody had 10,000 votes. I don't care first if all, she gets 10,000 votes. First of all, there was no votes. It was suggestions. All right, go ahead. So tell me who you're talking to, Zena. And she... Zena Buddy's girl on Twitter, okay? okay. And, and in December, what happened? So the month of December, I decided to put up uh, two hot chicks, former hot chicks of the week. Right. As hot chicks of the month, the whole month of December. Wow. Two girls. I didn't sanction that. Go yeah. ahead. All right. Well. I did. <laughs> it's right. growing. So like I, mold. I yeah. put up on Twitter like a week or two ago for people to put in suggestions who to pick, you know, who they thought, who they liked and stuff for like that. For Hot Chick of the Month. Right. For right. Hot Chick of the Month. Two girls. Right. Okay. So this one girl thought she had, you know, she kept bothering Zena <laughs> that she had, you know, she thought she had a lot of votes and, you know, suggestions. I didn't right. even say votes. I right. said suggestions. Right. And I said, no, she doesn't. Because I can't, I looked to see who was voting. Yeah, not voting, but suggesting this right. one, that one. Right. You kind of do a mental tally, and you right, say, exactly. yeah, right, exactly. It's see. not like it, it's it's the vote for president. But or can right. Zena do that? Why? Where? Why is there? No, a I like he kind of do he, it. Thank God for him, because otherwise, I think the standards would be dropped. Right. right. Exactly. I mean, like Hefner looks over every magazine. But Zena doesn't even take a look. No, I don't no. What Zena? Does, why did Zena think the other girl should be? Hot no, chick she of didn't think. I just wanted. No, because she contacted Zena right. and thought that she should be it. Right. And I didn't think so because... Why are I, from you on what, the phone? I still don't know why you're on the phone. Because I was talking to Zena about it. Because I had saying, to, put, she, I had to girl, put up this morning the new, the, new, the girls. Robin, listen. Okay? I think I have it. Okay. Uh-huh. I think I've got this warped world My that Ronnie lives explode, in. Okay. Yes. It came down to two chicks for Hot Chick of the Month. Right. One of them and said, and the girl who's in charge of it can't figure it out. No, no one no, of them that's said, not, "That's not it." No, that's this girl called. Listen to now. me. This girl calls in complaining to Zena. She didn't call. She emailed. Her. All right, she emailed Zena and said, "Look, I really do think I'm hot chick of the month, okay. despite what you guys think." Right. right. Exactly. So Zena had to contact Ronnie about it. Exactly. Because that's Ronnie, what was going on. Ronnie's like, "Look." I'm firm Hadn't on Hadn't you already picked Hot Chick of the Month? No, I went right up until yesterday, and I decided yesterday <laughs> who I was putting up. It was, then why was there even was a conversation t- on Saturday? No, this was yesterday. Oh. What are you talking about? I don't Where know are when you? this happened. It happened yesterday. It seems all very odd to me. 
Everything seems odd to you. I didn't know you branched to Hot Chick of the Month. I thought that no, maybe it's you're the taking... No, it's the end of the year. Are you taking on too much? So why is she Hot Chick of the Year? No, because I just want to... I just want to... Is there a Hot Chick of the Year? No. Okay, because here's what I'm thinking. Take okay. the 12 finalists Hot Chick of the Month. And it's, and too then, it's too much. It's and too much. And then go out much. live... For the 12 finalists. Go out live where? Have a to your clubs. Pageant. Now you have something to do when you get on stage. They, these are the 12 finalists. Yeah, but these clubs don't want to do it. It takes up too much um, time. All right. You want to do it here? I'll do it here. No. You no, no, don't I don't want to do, do it here. You don't want to do it here, see? No, so no, that's no why I want nothing to do with you. I... <laughs> <laughs> and your Take hot it chicken. To Fox. <laughs> yeah, but you'll have it on your Fox show. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. well, they probably would let me have it on there. Right, that. right. Well, see, that don't would talk about it. That would be a great thing. A great thing. That would be a great thing. So why did you get 12 finalists and then pick a hot chick of the no, year? They seem I, to care. Listen, here's what, here's what I did. I told you what I did. I didn't want to make a whole big deal. I just said people put in suggestions who, who you think should be right. hot chick so you, of the year. I heard, two, you, being, I I heard you being very firm with Zena, though. I heard you kind of like, you know, look. Yeah, because the girl insisted that she was the one that should be it. And, and it's not true because yeah. she wasn't getting the suggestions from people. Ronnie was, was very firm on the there phone. There was with one Zena. girl who walked away with it. Right. Definitely. And there was two girls that I considered like tied practically. Mm -hmm. So now I got three girls up instead of two. Mm -hmm. There was All a tie right. for second place. So I, I think you should. What do is this hot chick? What month is she hot chick? Of? December. And then will there be. Is this going to go now on? Now in January, we start all over hot chick of the week. But I think that it's anticlimactic. There's no hot chick of the year. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe we'll do that. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like it's leading up to something. And maybe. Then it, then you maybe kind of, it is. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. But well, when does the hot chick of the month girl get posted? They're posted right now, today. There's hot chick of the week. If there's three of them. Actually, it was supposed to be two for the hot chick of the month. I picked two for hot chick of the month. <laughs> The girl that was in here is a Miss How Harry. can he do that? I don't the know. Because that's the Somebody way, ought to that's yell at way, Ronnie. No, because this way the guys get to see more pictures, more hot chick stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. For the month of December. It's Christmas. You know, you got to put up more boobs, you know, more hot stuff, you know. All so right. instead of having one girl, I had two. Right, right. All right? Okay. So All now right. it wound up for three. And I, I'll announce the three real quick. Yeah. It's double X, Vixen Brit, double X is not first. Jen <laughs> under slash... Duran is number two. Right. And number three is the girl who was last week. You saw her picture, thought she was hot. Yeah. At, at model barefoot, under slash. Un, model under slash barefoot. All Those right. are the three girls up for the hot chick of the month. They're still up for hot chick of the month. They went up this morning. They are the Do you hot, notice a pattern? They that, are the hot chicks uh, of the no month. Every hot, okay? chick, every hot chick seems to have an underscore in her. Yeah. Uh, no, except Vixen. She, she, doesn't, she, she doesn't just has a million X's. Right. Yeah. She, she's like <laughs> double X, double X. Wow. Yeah. And didn't so. was Vixen the one that had the impersonator? All the tattoos. No, she had all the tattoos. But didn't she have an impersonator who was like V-I-X-X-X-E-N? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they yeah. blew her account. They, they shut her account down. Yeah. It, was, it was a whole thing. See, Robin, I'm up but on Zena got her account back for her. Oh, good. Yeah, Zena, Zena has an in with Twitter? Yeah, some, she does, man. Yeah. Because when I first went on Twitter, some guy came on as me and changed like one letter. Right. And it was like cursing all the girls out and stuff. Right. And, that could ruin your whole hot chick thing. Yeah. It ruined my, I was, and I only had like maybe 100 followers then. This is before you started talking about it. And um, You need they to protect your they hot shut, chick. They shut my account down. Right. So she, And it wasn't even me. So she went and... Explain. Somehow it. got in touch with Twitter. How do you? Um, how do you? How many followers do you have now? Uh, hundred uh, should be like hundred twenty three thousand. It's about the same circulation as Playboy at this point. Uh, yeah. No, so he's in business. Yeah, man. How about Hot Chick of the Week magazine? Like, um, start yeah. an app like Ralph did. You're gonna shoot? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. I don't want well, anything to see, do with you it. You should have seen this guy yesterday, man. Go ahead. He was he was out of his mind with this stuff. He was like he was like. Uh, What's her name? Annie Leibovitz or whatever her name is? Yeah, it was like Annie Leibovitz. <laughs> <laughs> so do you drag in, like, a ton of equipment? Yeah. yeah. That's what his suitcase this. was full of equipment. And his light, one of his lights was, like, all screwed up, and he had to call for help. And the guy helped, told him what to do and got it working. And, 
he had it all set up. I had a hard wire. It was cool. Yeah. It was cool. It was Why a cool didn't shoot. Why did you get an assistant for a day like that? You want to know what, Robin? I don't know enough to tell an assistant what to do. I just have to do it. <laughs> I wouldn't say, like, I don't know anyone who's worked with me before. I mean, so I have to set up this stuff. Oh, well, Ralph, Ralph helped him, right. and I helped him a little bit. And yeah. and then, like, he, he gets all, like, wound up when people start telling, like, they want to do this, do this, this. And he at one point, he says, listen, I got to take this thing over. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Well, you'll see the tape of Howard yeah. TV. I mean, it was, first of all, Ralph oh, my goodness. starts it. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And I go, Ralph. Why would you get involved with Ralph? I know, I know. So I go, Ralph, I got I to gotta do my thing here a little bit, okay? So back. then I see Ralph with his cell phone, and he starts taking pictures. I go, Ralph, why don't you take the pictures, and I can go home? <laughs> You're going to stand there and take pictures? I'm te- you, you, you essentially hired me to take the picture for your magazine. Right. I need you to help me. Are you going to say, no, but I'm shooting down here. Why don't you come down? I go, listen. You shoot the picture. I'll I'll go hang out. Right, dude. I can't believe he spent six hours there. Oh yeah. my goodness! <laughs> While they asked me to do it, and then I yelled at Sam Simon. I wrote him a note of apology, by the way, uh, because I got testy with him. I'm shooting, and it's getting late now, and I'm tired. Yeah, you know, I've been up all morning. I get up at the crack of dawn because of this job. I just I'm in that I'm in that rhythm. Yeah, you know how it goes. So I'd been up since like six in the morning or five in the morning. So I, it was getting late for me, and they wanted these pictures. And I said, you know what? I'll do a picture of the two superheroes playing chess or something. I have the library. It's very nice. But it was a big setup. And Sam was helping me. He was being nice about it. But then I'm trying to take a shot. He's in my way. I go, Sam! <laughs> Get out of Listen. <laughs> go over there. Over there. Where should I stand? He goes, I see, out of the room. I got, because listen, it's all on my head, and I take it seriously. One thing you know about me, Robin, I take everything I do seriously. Absolutely. Why bother if you're not going to be serious? Exactly. Like Hot Chicken a Week, you got to take it seriously. Ronnie's very serious. That's Mm. right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh,. I, I was hiring Ronnie for security for you. And he, and he t- Ralph he called me back. He was running said, his own corporation. Ronnie said, uh, you don't need security. So no, I didn't say that. That's what he told me. No, I said, are you sure that's what he really wants? He said, well, let me call him back and check. Oh, because he, he called back. He, he said, Ronnie says you don't no, need No, no, no. He explained the situation to me. Right. He said what it was, where it well, was. I just wanted and, somebody watching my stuff right. and my gear. And we did that. All so right. everything was that's cool. All. All and right. everybody was cool. Everyone right. was great. Yeah. yeah. Wait till you see these, these pictures, man. I'll tell you <laughs> that one guy, <laughs> Chewbacca, whatever yeah. his name is. <laughs> this guy, this guy has a full. He, I never saw anything like it. He looks, he looks more like Chewbacca than Chewbacca. <laughs> he he uh, wore stilts. Walk this the way. whole thing. He guy wow. was crashing into he the was ceiling. He was like eight feet tall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy stuff. It's insane. Walk slow, walk slow, walk slow. It's a fascinating world. And there's one woman who Hot actually, chicks, man. yeah, one woman actually makes a living off of this. Really? Like she, yeah, she's worked it into a whole business. What is the what does she do? Uh, she Go goes to, to conventions, parties. She her costuming. She makes costumes for other people. She's worked it into a major business. Wow. I mean, it's a, it's a thing. It's like Halloween all all year long. And how did Ralph find these people? Does he go to the conventions? He went to all the conventions, and he would send me pictures of them, and I would say, oh, I like this one, I like that one, you know, or he would pick them, you know. So he he met them, right. and I guess they're writing an article on them, but. Uh, yeah, that other guy, his partner, life mate, whatever he called him, yeah. was interviewing each one at, one at a time and doing a whole interview in the back room. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there was a whole thing going on. Okay. But uh, it was really cool. It was fun. But the band, you know, I take it seriously. So anyway, getting back to Ronnie on the red carpet, this is unbelievable. So here he is. Ronnie's out in L.A. and he's on the red carpet. He's like Brad Pitt. Thanks, Jay. Right now, I am hanging out with Ronnie Mund on the red carpet. You may not know this, but he is Howard Stern's personal limo driver, bodyguard, and has known him for 26 years. I also hear that you have a pilot coming up on Fuel TV. Tell us about it. Uh, I'm glad to be here for Fox and and Fuel TV for the UFC. But uh, our deal with uh, you guys, I can't talk about right now. It's very top secret. Mum's the word? Mum's the word. Look at this guy. Mum's the word. I love him. He's like a diplomat Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I'm very happy to be here for Fox and Fuel Can't TV. Can't talk about well, my I, next I, project. You know, he's like, I, he's I, like I, Jennifer Aniston. You know? I, was trying, things... you know, I was trying to be you know, <laughs> professional and act, act like an asshole. He would rather just talk know? about what he's here for and not talk about his personal hi, life. I can't and... talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, the, the whole interview is, hi, I can't talk. <laughs> 
You hear this guy has more things he can't oh, talk about. That's the best. Because then they start asking about me. He, go, he knows not to talk. He yeah. goes, I can't talk about that either. <laughs> this well, is a guy who I can't. learned, man. Let's talk poetry. <laughs> oh, that poetry we're going to get to in a minute. <laughs> that's the greatest. Everybody was a buzz I'm, about I'm the working poetry. On, I'm working on it for the party. Oh, great. Oh, a little Mikey wrote a song to uh, Winter. Yeah, really? Fuck, yeah. fuck him. <laughs> Did you hear it? No, Wait a minute, but fuck him good. anyway. I'm going to send the poem over to, like, a sixth-grade teacher and have her grade it. I'm not going to tell her who wrote it. Oh, is that why Jason took it from me the other yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he why told me— Why are you he, doing that? Because it's he funny. T- he told me he needed it to post it for something. Right. Look, so, we which know was bullshit, what obviously. the sixth-grade teacher's going to say. <laughs> now, what you are you going to do? Why, why do that for? I think you're going to do well in sixth grade. I think. <laughs> Thank I, you. Sure. I think you better go a little lower. You know what's weird about your poetry? Like, when you write about winter— Yeah. You're you so, write about winter. Yeah, I mean, you're so literally like, winter is cold. Okay. Winter, the leaves no, fall off the tree. No, I didn't say it was trees. cold. Well, what have you say? Winter is leaves falling off the tree. Winter, the t- the clocks. It gets dark It early. gets darker early. <laughs> very like dark. Like, you're very, you're very little. You like sleep you, more. You get Z's. You don't try to draw any sort of... Like, like we're in the winter of our life. Or Why? No, no, no. Why would or, I do that? Or, or, or you know, <laughs> fog comes in she, on little cat feet. She, fog rolls in on little cat feet. What the fuck does do that mean? She asked me to do a thing about winter. <laughs> that's how I felt about it, and that's what I did. Right, but you're feeling... I kind of did <clears throat> like, every kind, like what goes on every month in winter, kind of. You know Your feelings saying? really aren't in the poem. It's more like a repo- weather report. It's more like a... No, Sunny today, cloudy tomorrow. It's a description, no, it... but very literal. I mean, right. not, you didn't What do you want me to do, anywhere. write a 20-page poem? No. Come on. I try to do it... No, you know what? You I'm know. saying some of the great poets... I don't know if you read poetry. I'm not a great poet. But some of the Never poets, said I what they try to do is they, they talk, they're writing about winter, but sometimes it's more like about old age, like you kind of see... or. I'm in the winter of my life, or... Well, I don't want to do that. You know, you don't want... You just want to do literal stuff. I I, I get it. Okay, that's your style. All right. Let's get back to you on the red carpet. All right. How did this come up? How about tonight, Ronnie? Who are you predicting to win the fight? Is it going to be Velasquez or Joe Santos? Cain Velasquez all the way. All right, and before you walk down this carpet, I have one thing I have to say to you. Baba Booey. Baba Booey? What's your problem? Is what you should be saying. (laughs) <laughs> Back to you, Jay. <laughs> Poor Jay. <laughs> he went to probably journalism school. So did this broad. She was hot. Yeah. And then Ronnie, then, and then Ronnie on the red carpet. Like, you think that this was just a fluke and someone interviewed him. But no, then some other chick came over to interview him from some website. Here, Brian, for MMA Heat. I'm here with. I'm just gonna. Can I go, Ronnie, the limo driver? I like when she gives her credentials. She says she slurs it so bad you don't even know what the hell she's All saying. Right. She's embarrassed about where she is yeah. and who she's interviewing. Everything. I'm here with <laughs> and Ronnie, the limo driver, from the limo <laughs> room. Nice. She was hot too. You can't even tell me where she's from here. I'll play for you again. Here, Brian, for MMA Heat. I'm here with. I'm just MMA gonna, Heat. Can I go, Ronnie, the limo driver? I was asking Robin. That was the joke. Oh, uh-huh. oh, you are so bad. <laughs> Give him his own show. <laughs> <laughs> MMA Heat is where it's from. It didn't. You could. She just kind of she says it very like, fast. You, I think if you say it fast stuff, it sounds like NBC or ABC. Because right. basically, that's how you are known on the Howard Stern Show. What brings you to the uh, the fights here on Fox? Uh, well, I'm here to support Fox and Fuel TV. I'm in the negotiation of a deal with them. Possibly, it's nothing I can really talk about right now. And they invited me out here to come and support them, and I'm here to do it. Can I just tell you how awesome this is because I listen to the show and I'm used to hearing your voice phoning in and going. It's it's beautiful to see it coming right out of your mouth. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be, you know, getting interviewed by you. You're a very beautiful woman. Well, thank you very much. So I know Howard is a fan uh, of the sport. I know he's got some of the fighters on and stuff, but I mean, around the around the uh, the way here when you guys are working on the show, is this something that you guys talk about a lot? Is, 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 is fighting sort of a big deal in you guys' life? Well, we don't talk about it, you know, too much on the air. Uh, but we have guys at at work that are big fans. Like uh, we have guys like Richie Wilson, who's one of the producers for Howard TV. He goes to all the fights. He's friends with some of the people in MMA and UFC. <laughs> oh my God! This is some interview. Oh my God! Richie Wilson's so here. <laughs> you know my plumber likes. Uh... <laughs> the MMA. guy who works on the show. Right. She asked me about people who work on the show if they aren't MMA. The guy in the and parking why that, garage. Why is that so fucking I think she's, funny? Look at her. I think she's referring to like Robin or Fred. You know, uh, or I said nobody. It, all right. 
and UFC. I can't win so uh, <sighs> we, we go to the fights. We went to the Philadelphia fight, and uh, we we saw somebody get his ass kicked in pretty bad, which I was really upset about because I really dig Tito. Oh yeah, I was at that fight, but Rashad looked really good that night. Yeah, he looked really good. <laughs> yeah. he, You're crying over there. This is I. J- you know, uh, it's been a Ronnie weekend for me because I watched Ronnie's block party. All right. Oh yeah, that's. I want to talk about <laughs> that too. TV? I, I, I is that talk- the greatest special? Oh, Dude, I want to. I want to talk about I that. Can we- turn it off. It was just amazing. I want. I, can I just bring something up sure. about that? You know, Scott went around saying, you know, I hadn't seen it. I watch, actually I watched it this weekend also. Right. Okay. Scott went around saying that he got. He was very insulted about the whole situation. Because <laughs> he's a lunatic. Because he's the only one who got hammered. 90% right. of the show was him getting hammered. Bullshit, man. I got hammered. Sal got hammered. Everybody got That's hammered. because it's like a photograph. Everyone always looks at themselves first. Right. They only he's see looking, He only sees himself. He didn't see what's going on. Yeah, really? Yeah. He came out on fire. Um, I hated to see Tito get it, but I know Tito had just been in a fight not too long before, and, uh, you know, I was happy to see he tried to put up a good fight, but, you know, the best man won, I guess. Well, and I have to think that there's a little bit of uh, symmetry in between what Howard does and what you guys do and what MMA is sometimes perceived as. A little bit too raw, a little bit too much on the edge sometimes, and yet, really, you guys are making waves, and, and, and people... Did you ever hear my poem about winter? (laughs) slowly you're starting to come over well not slowly now but you know people are starting to realize actually this is some solid stuff going on do you feel that there's any kind of symmetry between you guys um i don't know about that but i I feel that the idea of them putting on on fox tv which is regular television a lot more people are going to watch it now that don't they don't have to pay for it you know and uh it's gonna it's gonna draw a lot more people well i'm a big howard fan i think he's terrific and and when you talk to robin you tell her that i will take her to the fights because I know she she hasn't had a, a date in a little while. She's been talking about how she hasn't she hasn't seen you know. You want to go out with that chick and go to the fights, Robin? No. No. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> anyway, that's the red carpet interview. Two red carpet interviews with Ronnie. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. And then Ronnie was on what's Star Cam? What was that? That's like they put you up on some. I guess on. A, what was that? I think the star cam is like at the fight. They put Ronnie up on the screen. Oh, yeah? Oh, did they? I think so. I didn't even see that. We have Howard well, Stern's bodyguard with you us. You definitely need to be bodyguarded. Yes, I oh. knew. I do. Oh, oh this is where you're being God. sexy. Yeah, this is Ronnie uh, telling... Uh, you to- know, we can't even let him out. <laughs> you are quite the little Why, What did cupcake. I do that was so terrible? Listen to him. How you feeling? With a body like that, you definitely have to... Body like that? You have to be bodyguarded. Well, you know, you've been working with Howard for a while. 26 years. What's it like working with such a talented guy like Howard Stern, who I really look up to? Uh, It's great. That's all I could say, you know. Uh, I'm not here to talk about Howard. (laughs) I'm here to talk about the UFC, MMA, Fox, Fuel, and... uh, What's wrong with that? You know, we got you trained. Thank Mm. God. I don't want you... He's afraid to even say you're great. Yeah, I don't Uh, want you... I said he was great. We (laughs) stop it. I don't want you... I do not want you talking about me. You did I just don't. fine. But, uh, you know what? Please, I, I'm afraid when they say he's from the Howard Stern show. You want and he starts leering down a girl's mm. dress and saying, hey, oh, baby, you need it. a bodyguard with a body hey, like that. Hey, what's the big deal? She's I a beautiful say lady. Nasty. You need a I, cavity search. I didn't say it in the nasty way. And I'm way. the now man to it. do it. Your body needs bodyguarding. <laughs> it's winter out. <laughs> Can you learn from that girl and mumble Howard Stern? I work for that Howard <laughs> Stern. I'm here to support them. Okay, so who do you think is going to be taking it home tonight? Anyway, there's a lot of that kind of pretty wild. What is wrong with you over there? And then Ronnie was the star of the wrap-up show the other day when he was discussing his poetry. And then he has a he writes poems, I guess, to women. I, yes. wish, I wish I could hear those. Now, I know John Hine was trying to corner him. He thinks that Ronnie has copies of some of those I don't. poems. And he says he doesn't. I don't. Why would I have copies of them when I you wrote? You never wrote a poem to Stephanie? I write it in a card and give it to the she person. She doesn't have them? You she didn't might. Ask? I don't know. I don't know if I wrote one to her. Maybe I did. I don't After know. After Stephanie read one of your poems, wouldn't she just break up with you? <laughs> I would think. That's our problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh-huh. Like, she read it and went, oh, he's so sweet. Oh, dear. <laughs> and did anybody has... ever write you a poem? And, huh? then, and then Ronnie, oh, I'm sure. Answer me. I wrote you a poem, Winter. 
But any, I, did anybody ever write you a poem? Sure, Answer the question. Sure. Yeah, okay. Let me, I hope not. I hope you broke up with them if they did. I did. What's wrong with that? What's wrong Beth with told it? me she was dating a guy once who wrote her a poem and she broke up with him. <laughs> all right, whatever. She thought he was kind of a nice guy and everything. And all of a sudden, then she read all the, of a sudden you read the poem. It was on the level of like a seven-year-old, and she went, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is just all too right. weird. Yeah, putting, oh, yourself, okay. putting yourself in writing is a big deal. Yeah, I don't write poems to anybody. <laughs> Look, I can honestly tell you I've never written a poem you, to a you, girl. You asked me to do something for the no, show. I you did, did great. Okay. You told us you were a poet. I didn't say. I just said I wrote some poems. I didn't say I was a poet. Anyway, well, so he was on. Right. He's on the wrap-up show, and he describes to John Hine that he has to be alone when he writes, and you know he kind of like goes into a thing. Really? And like you know you hear like true. Paul like McCartney. Like songwriters and you stuff. You hear Paul McCartney and John Lennon. They, he goes, "This is all in my brain. Like it's all there. I just have to tap into I it. I have to get quiet so I can hear." But they tap in and, and write, "Hey Jude," and you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and then Ronnie's brain taps in and gets, "Winter is cold." I never claim to be a, a <laughs> get away from me. And then he. Uh, and the then he, days are short, like me. The, and then it's not even that poetic. Uh, yeah, or funny. <laughs> That's too good. And then anyway, and then Ronnie describes that when he writes a poem to a girl, he has a secret formula. Oh. But then he goes, I'm not telling you the formula because, you know, I just don't want to give that up. And Somebody then, will cop his style. But two seconds later, he gave up the formula. Because <laughs> John knows how to, he likes to, you know. He prod. Keeps, he keeps doing it, man. He keeps, you know. Keeps at you. Picking at you. Right. You know? So Ronnie reveals that when he writes a poem to a girl, there's three elements you put in it. Okay. The sun in her hair. No, no. I said there's three elements. The sun, the hair, and the eyes. Yeah, the sun, the hair, and the eyes. If you write about a girl's eyes, her hair, and, and the sun. the sun. Yeah. And so all of his love poems have that in it. Uh-huh. Because that's the formula. It was fascinating. The wrap-up show was fascinating with him. What can I say? <laughs> What's so terrible? That, I didn't say it was terrible. I'm learning. All right. So I learned. And I learned about a lot of shit yesterday about right. you with photography. I learned a lot of crap about the lighting. Yeah. All that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I learned about hair, <laughs> sun, and, and the eyes. eyes. And Zena Buddy's girl. I'm on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you, but it's like a whole Ronnie world. That I was you're on not the phone five minutes, dude. That He's was like like a the whole... whole time, and I was standing right behind you. It's not like nothing. Anything was going you on. You finally got what you wanted. You you, you got this You're whole thing. You're a mogul. You got stuff going on. I'm happy. Yeah. He's happy. I'm happy, man. He loves his fame. His fame. I love being here. I'm happy. He go, And he goes out on tour and he visits people in clubs. And... Yeah. It's amazing. I have to say, the <laughs> chemistry between you and Scott on stage... <laughs> It's Did you watch electric. that? Electric. There is a special on Howard Dude, TV. Dude, we got so much book, so much book now. Yeah. Gigs. Yeah. Because you would, you know, blowing this it all up. It is amazing. We got so much crap booked. We we even got a big hotel in Atlantic City after us right now. Imagine when they see those two two guys on stage doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like oh, Martin and Lewis. The best is Scott dancing. Oh my God! <laughs> in the aisles. Did you? What did you think of oh, backstage my God. on Howard TV? We have a special Ronnie's block party. What do you think of him when he greets people and he's eating? He can't stop eating. There's food in his hands when no. he puts his arms around. He's disgusting. He's chewing yeah. while the picture's being taken. Did you see the one the one picture with the it's one great. girl? The guy she tried to walk away. She took a picture with him, and the guy just said, "No, no, take another one." Walk back, and she didn't want to walk back. Yeah, because he was in the middle of eating. Right, she didn't want to disturb him anymore. Yeah. Meanwhile, they paid thirty-five bucks to meet him. And then the screaming about the money. Frustrating, man. Usually, a guy who DJed on his cell phone. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. He should get paid. Usually, in these in these uh, things, you get paid the same night. You walk out of there with your money. That That's is the, the best. best. Where's my so goes, Where's my money? We did the gig. Where's my money? Yeah. You usually get the cash before you leave. What do you mean, usually? Didn't you just start doing this? <laughs> In comedy. He's got all these rules. Well, you, you know? heard Artie talking about all that. Remember, Artie used to <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, Artie used to yeah. talk about that yeah. all the time. So Scott's now got, got the lingo down. Uh, it's customary to get our cash <laughs> that night. You got paid. <laughs> and then Shirley goes, no, I didn't get paid. I'm waiting for the check, and when I get it, you'll get it. Check. <laughs> I mean, there was cash. I saw cash being uh, handed that's out that's at the bar. That's cash. Yeah. <laughs> Do I look like a bank to it's you? It's customary for us to get... It's customary for you to have an act. And every week he quits. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. See, see, and he, he's quitting all the it, time. And then, and, then, and then he says it's all about him because then everybody was yelling at Shuley. Right. Not just him. Right. You know, and, and we all caught shit for it, but he claims that it's, it was 90% of the show was all about because him he's being... he's focused it, on himself. Yeah, really. It wasn't... Because oh, I, I finally saw it this week and it yeah. was like... 
You look as dumb as he does. Yeah, right. exactly. It's all and Sal ridiculous. throwing up, is, is, you know, he it's, got hammered. I mean, unbelievable, yeah. Sal throwing up. How about that? That was. Did you watch Sal vomit? Oh, my God. Oh, you, how could you miss that? It was amazing because I he told took you. one shot and then everything came it's up. It's the greatest Howard TV special yet. It is just remarkable. More to come. More, a lot more to come. And I love them putting the pins in the map. They're actually on this road. Oh, I love that. It's, how great is that? <laughs> it's amazing. So that's the Ronnie world, yeah. if you will. So it's, uh, and what's the next poem? J- I, I got so many emails from I'm people. I'm doing a holiday one for the party. I'm do- going to open up the party with it. Oh, fabulous. Because yeah. J.D. reading Ronnie's poem got the most email. You should always have J.D. reading your poem. I know. Yeah. That's, what that, that's why I didn't want to read it. Although on the wrap-up show, Ronnie started reading his own poem, and I could see the potential in that being really funny. <laughs> yeah, but he would only read two lines. That wasn't fair. Yeah, yeah well, I, I'm not, I don't want to read Why don't you read your own poem? I don't like writing. I don't like I mean, Maya Angelou does it. I, re- I, re- I read it while I'm doing it, and that's it. You know. Right. Anyway, let's see. If you, I think he got him to do it. He got two. I got when two. I wrote it... In the bathroom, the first couple of lines. Ugh. Actually, well, <laughs> it was quiet. I, I, I got to be alone and for that, quiet. For that, for, that, for that to happen. <laughs> it's like a guy shitting on a piece of paper. No. Winter is the And then time Jason got all upset because he thought. The trees? He thought, he thought, Jason thought that was the actual paper that I wrote it in the bathroom with. Right. And he was all upset. <laughs> Winter. But it wasn't. Is when the leaves fall off the trees. He was alone when he thought that. Yeah. I need time to think. <laughs> this shit doesn't I need happen overnight. Quiet. Yeah. How long I need, did it take you to write winter? Seriously. I need to go downstairs when I'm quiet. You know, how, how long did it quiet. take you to write winter? Uh, a couple of days. Yeah, really? Yeah, a couple of days. I do a little <laughs> bit at a time. Because, like, if, if I, I don't, I, if I, don't, I sit lines. there and I try and write, you know, think of things and write things, and then I'll cross them out and then rewrite little things, and then if my brain starts to bother me, I just quit. And start Let's again see what day. goes with trees. Fleas, I just walk away from it. Fleas, then then I'm gonna, then I'm, no, gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna rattle my brain too much. Right, but you, you gotta know? make sure it all rhymes. That's the hard part. Yeah, I try. How come you didn't write "Winter is when I wear my jacket and hat"? You know what I mean? I would think that would have worked its way in. <laughs> that's Benji. He writes. He, he, that's what he writes. You didn't even have to put "Winter" in the poem, just because it's about winter. No, he, he's very I like, literal. I like. I like. All right. <laughs> I, you winter asked me to do something, when... I did it, okay? Thank did I do you. it for you? No, you did. Thank you. It, might be, it might be not up to your standards. No, 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 no. We're just asking you as I mean, a I'm answering as a you, not we. I'm saying person. you. Why don't you read I'm your... asking you as a, a creative person just what you're thinking. That's Why don't you read your poem on stage, at least, when you go to these clubs? Maybe I will now. I would say a club poem would be appropriate for every gig. Maybe I will, but I won't read it. Winter is when I wear my jacket and my hat and my gloves. Maybe I'll have Scott reading. They'll give him something to do. Two boots. How's that? Two gloves. One scarf. Winter <laughs> is when it snows. <laughs> Dude, people were putting up all weekend. Were putting up these these crazy ass poems on Twitter. <laughs> Let me see if I. You've oh my god. Others to write poetry. Oh yeah, to hear I, I some of this stuff. Anybody, what happens if you're not alone any, and quiet? I can't have like anybody around. I can't have the TV on. <laughs> the dogs can't be bothering me. So <laughs> the first couple of lines, I was serious. I was in the bathroom. Instead of reading the paper. Did you close the door to go to the bathroom or you went into the bathroom? No. Usually it's re- and they're reading the paper. <laughs> you know what? I can't stay. Like sometimes I have a uh, house guest. Uh-huh. And you know we keep like our newspapers out, and they'll take the newspaper and they disappear with it for a right. while, and then they put it back. And like now I'm supposed to read it after you were shitting and <laughs> and like fucking reading the newspaper. Well, I throw it out after I'm done. Do you? Yeah. Oh, it's so disgusting when people do that, and it comes back all wrinkled, and you know it was going on. The best is you know when you're just somewhere and somebody says, "Can I borrow your paper?" Oh, but you don't even know them. I just and then need they it. Take it in the bathroom. I just need it for like five minutes, <laughs> and then I bring it back to you. Why can't anyone just sit in the bathroom by themselves? Sal, uh, uh, Sal get your does own that. Magazine. Sal yeah. takes borrows somebody's newspaper and then he takes it to the can outside and uh, reads it and then brings it back. Oh, it's disgusting! Just throw it in the garbage. And into the bathroom. No, no, right. I, was, I was going to the bathroom. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> I think I'm glad right. I so walk us through this. You go in the bathroom. I go in the bathroom with a little pad and a pen. Winter is for, oh, oh. And I start <laughs> and I start trying to think things out, and I start. You know, scribbling me out, trying to get them to rhyme and all that baloney, and I'll scratch things out and then add things in. And Man. Well, that's beautiful. What a process. It's like listening to John Lennon and how he writes a song. <laughs> I tried. Did you ever repeat anything with a different girl? Like, so you gave something to a girl and it yeah, worked? I did. And it yeah, worked. I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, no, I... Well, you listen to the rap up show. I'm not going to play this. It's too crazy. <laughs>
But I was trying to find the clip where Ronnie reads his own poem. It's only two lines, but it's pretty good. I would like to have a copy of that poem. I'd like to read that. Like, I, I wonder how I could do with it. Do you think I could get through the whole poem without saying anything? No. I, I don't either. <laughs> Winter is a time of cold. I didn't say that. My home gets mold. <laughs> Uh, did I say cold yet? <laughs> Scratch that out. All right. I like when he's. I wonder what he scratches out. I like to read that. <laughs> like stuff that's not good enough for that part. Oh, you got to see that piece of paper, my like God. They. Yeah. Yeah. Show your work. Right. It's a mess. Scratched out, written in, and scratched out again. Then scratch out a word here, add a word there. It's crazy. And here, all right. Well, here's Ronnie reading two lines of his poem. Ronnie, <laughs> you're going to get goofed on regardless, so why not be the one who's reading it? It's your work. It's, you, you know. I understand that, but I think it's funny when somebody else reads it. Will you read a little bit of it? No. Nah. Jason, Pierre? Jason read no, it. No, no. Winter is coming. Uh, no. I think I left it somewhere else. Well, according to Sal, you're not qualified to evaluate comedy anyway. Yeah, right. Just do the first two lines, Ronnie. All That's right. it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even. Yes, you can. I JD, can. stop laughing. Turn uh, off JD's winter, mic. winter is when there are no leaves on the trees. Winter is when we say goodbye to the birds and the bees. Keep going. And that's it, dude. I'm done. <laughs> winter is when we say goodbye to the, to birds, the birds and, and the, the bees. bees. Yeah, well, they leave. The bees die. Every time I looked up in the sky and saw a bird this weekend, I thought of Ronnie's good. poem. Good. That's like, good. I guess they're headed yeah. out of town. They're on their way out, man. <laughs> Winter is when we turn the heat on. <laughs> Never said that. <laughs> and that's when the birds are gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand upon my lawn, which is frozen. Once upon a lawn so frozen. What rhymes with frozen? Oh, dozen. A uh, later hosen. <laughs> Scratch that out. Mm. Say goodbye to the birds and bees. I would like some wine and cheese. <laughs> when it makes me hungry. Yeah, but that's got nothing to do with the winter, dude. Right. You could have wine and cheese anytime. Oh, see there, Fred? Ah. Not pure. That's right, Fred. Before winter, there is fall. And after winter... There is spring. Scratch that out. There was no winter at all. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme. I'm not going with it. Well, the way this winter is going, there is no winter yet. <laughs> and then, you know, like he's in there, he's in the bathroom writing this. He's like, you know. Oh, winter. Winter, is the time. <laughs> winter. Winter. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I gotta get this out of my system. I Winter get... is when it starts to freeze. Where did I put my car keys? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Where's my pen? <laughs> the whole process should be t taped. <laughs> like let it be when. Uh, See, the I couldn't do that with somebody standing over. You would be, you would, you would, would be, be you would be clogged up. Uh, yeah, with the, the light, with with, with the camera light on, and right. I, I couldn't do it. No way. I can't take it in here. So I look, I go downstairs and lock myself downstairs. I do it. Right. Well, anyway, that's the update on Ronnie. You asked me to do something. I did it. You did it. You it, did might, a good job. it might not be the greatest thing in the world, but I. But did it's it. a poem. I, I believe me. I could deal with poem of the week from you. I love. <laughs> that's his too much poem. for my brain, man. Not every week. Maybe once a, one. once a month. Once a maybe. month if you could bring a well, poem. Well, I'm going to do bring the one, one at the party. The holiday right. party. Yes, I am. Yeah. My annual and holiday party. I hope I'll party. be drunk off my ass by the time I read it. <laughs> if I read it. Scott, you're on the air in Philly. Yo, Howard. What's up, man? It's an honor. Um, this Ronnie. Um, sometimes when he particularly knows he's been an asshole. No offense, Ronnie. Um, like in the car when he picks you up, is there ever any discussion on like, all right, I guess you're going to talk about me today or? Uh... No, he's a total pro. He sits there. He doesn't say anything. Thank God. Really? I mean, yeah. not angry or? Well, uh, sometimes I can tell he's upset because he starts swerving all over with the car oh, really? and like driving yeah. like a maniac. <laughs> yeah, but like that doesn't die. mean it's about you that I'm upset. Well, it does. No, it doesn't. Especially it could be about put, some whenever, whenever fucking I put the, cab that cut me off or something. When I put the partition up, it, he drives particularly bad. No, I don't. Yeah. He gets no, crazy. I just do. I do what I. I do what so I. Psychologically, what's going on? I'm cutting him off, and oh, it freaks him out. Oh, it's so not true. And then Come he starts. On. And then he starts going like he's, he literally. Sometimes I'm, I'm like almost falling off the chair. <laughs> he's so full of shit. Okay. Come on now. When there's particularly bad heat. 
like today's not that bad, but sometimes, you know, you really reamed his ass. Like when you go home, is it like, oh, great. Now I got to deal with him cutting a cab off or something. No, no, it's, it's not that literal. It's like uh, he's just like a, Ronnie's an angry guy. You know, he's got a lot of anger issues. You yeah. know? Don't we all? Yeah. And oh, oh yeah, I, I'll admit all that. Right. I admit it too. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't even know how angry you <laughs> are. That's the funny thing. Okay. You don't even know how aggressive yeah, right. you are. Yeah, okay. All That's right. how great you are because you take your life in your hands when you talk about him, or you know when you pull him on the carpet, and uh, so. Yeah, he takes I, his life in his hands. Come on, now, dude, give me a break. <laughs> No, he gets he gets very angry when he drives. We've never, in, in, in all this time, we've never hit anybody. We've never killed anybody. I've never no. but hit I can another tell car. When you're, I can tell when you're irritated. You ever flip the bird? I can tell when you're irritated, too, dude. So come on. Yeah, but you don't know it through my driving. You start throwing everything. <laughs> come on. What are you talking about? I don't throw anything about? at you. You start carrying on, not at me, but where I hear I, where stuff I throw? flying around in the back of the car, throwing things. Are you insane? Dropping books and carrying on. And what? He's such a liar. That's no, I'm not. because you're no, swerving the car. No, he gets all upset when he gets, like, something doesn't work. He'll just start banging on it and stuff. Don't, <laughs> he, don't fucking lie, man. I'm not lying. How many phones did you break before we had cell phones? Yeah. When the phones didn't work in the car. How yeah. many times did you bang them in the back? Come on. Never. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I could, I could Stop it. with somebody and then, you know, flipping them off, and then you end up in, to where you're in a traffic situation, and now somebody could get out and, like, mess with you or something. No, nah, like, we don't. We, we don't. We don't. No, nah, he's very professional. All right. Thanks, Scott. He is very professional. He really is. But that's Ronnie. All right, man. Thanks, Ron. Have a good day. Yes, you too. It's wrong now. Ron. Yeah. Keep saying that your loyalty lies in these hallways. You got that right. And in Howard's limo and, and all. And okay. In those types of surroundings. Okay. Well, you're pursuing, you're chasing some dreams right now. What do you mean with chasing? What am, what am I chasing? With your TV deal, you're, you're, you're making a bit of a transition. Yeah, but it's not going to interfere with the show at all, me working with Howard. It's going to be worked around that schedule on days we're off and stuff like that. that it's, it's, when we're gonna, you know, when I do it, if I do it, when it happens, um, it'll be worked around that schedule. It won't be on any day that I have to work here or work anything with him. So. Obviously, I mean, you're a professional guy. I know that you're a loyal guy as well. But you're tapping into your creative side a bit. Yeah, doing it for the show. They asked me to do it for the show. What are you talking about, dude? What, am I going to go out and uh, become a published uh, poet now? Not necessarily, but all these things point to the fact that you're beginning a bit of a career transition. You're going into more creative endeavors. Dude, I'm ready to retire. Don't worry about it. So when Howard retires, we can't expect you to be on the big screen? Or... No, man. No. Expect me to be at a pool with a, with a pina colada in my hand. Richard's dad leaving another message. It's deer season. <laughs> oh, Rich, this is your dad. I was just going to tell you deer season opened today. We went and <coughs> shot a big old doe. The only thing, we didn't see no bucks till tonight, and it was too dark to do any good on them. But got a big old doe, though, big old doe. So we took it over to the locker plant. We'll have some meat now, I guess. 
We'll talk to you later. Bye. What's the locker plant? I don't know, <laughs> but it's amazing, like, how, first of all, like, my dad never calls me. Like, maybe once a year. Yeah. Like He, I, he doesn't have anything to say. I, I do. Neither does Richard's dad. I mean, he, he essentially. No, but your father isn't going out hunting. No, he, he has nothing to say. <laughs> I mean, it's like, but my father, but I think it's sort of sweet that his dad wants to maintain this relationship and just leave these messages and things, you know? No, but I'm saying, you know, his dad mm-hmm. is actually, he always calls with, you know, some things yeah. that are going on on the farm. Yeah. Too. Or if they go to Taco Tico. Yeah, my like my dad goes out to eat his and call him. Go, ha, Howard. <laughs> this is your dad. Uh, we just went out to uh, you know Nathan's <laughs> and had a hot dog. Your mother right, had it's three. It's our annual trip to Nathan's. We had to two hot dogs, <laughs> and your mother had two hot dogs for our anniversary. <laughs> like the, he just never thinks to do that, and I, and I think it's somehow it's kind of sweet. But it's very sweet. I really do get the impression that Richard's family would never eat unless they shot deer and stuff. I mean, I think they're really eating that stuff to survive. Well, yeah, this they're is not how fucking around. they keep food on the table all year yeah. long. I got no problem with that because you know what? No, they eat it. Yeah, they're poor people and they eat. That's how they eat. They eat squirrel. Anybody eats a squirrel, God bless them. You got to fucking kill a squirrel to eat. Let them do it. Don't don't make judgments. You're 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 basically doing the same thing. You're just getting out of soup. I wouldn't even know if they were eating squirrel. Right. Oh, they eat squirrel. They have sloppy <laughs> Joe squirrel. <laughs> sloppy squirrel. I've seen, I saw. There was, we ran a special on Howard TV where Richard went hunting with his dad and stuff, and a couple of people went. And, his dad just like all of a sudden just hits a squirrel and he goes, "Don't hit him in the body because that's half the meat because those things hardly have any meat yeah, on them." Yeah, there's not much. You have to shoot him in the head. I mean, and oh. they're they're tiny. I uh, know that's a good shot. Yeah, and they're basically rats with like a, a cuter kind of tail than a rat. And he takes it and he skins it, and then like see, I couldn't do all that. Yeah, and he'll skin like fifty. He'd survive if there was a nuclear war. But I tell you, if, if he skins it, then he like, scrapes off some meat, and then he hands it off to his wife, and she cooks it in like a tomato sauce, and right, and, just stirs it right up there in the sauce, and then they pour it onto a, a sandwich, like a sloppy joe, right, on a bun, <laughs> yeah, squirrel on a bun. Hello, Howard. This is your father. I caught a mouse, and your mother ate it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what it sounds like to me. Because like, it'll be like, you know, hello, Howard. We were driving the car with your mother. And uh, we saw a, um, a deer, on, a raccoon on the side of the road, roadkill, so we brought it home and ate it. I'd have them locked up in a mental institution. If they right, did that. you'd have to send somebody out to get them. But Richard's dad would be like, hey, Richard, this is your dad. Yeah, we saw some cool roadkill and we ate it. Yeah, what was it? He was hunting the week or two ago and they found, hmm. they, hunt, they shot two, and then they found one on the road. I yeah. think it was coons. Yeah, I think I have the one where he, like, he saw a squirrel dead on the side of the road and he ate it. <laughs> Oh, uh, Rich, this is your dad. I just want to tell you, I just got through eating dinner. Good old roadkill squirrel. I was coming back <laughs> from the river over Redfield. Squirrel didn't make it across the road, so I picked him up and brought him home. Boy, a nice, juicy young one. Oh. Good, good. Eat. Had mashed potatoes with him and everything. Yeah. So we'll talk to you later, bub. That's all right. Don't call. Do they do something <laughs> ordinary on Thanksgiving and have turkey? Or uh, yeah, I think so. But, you know, it's pretty wild, man. I mean, I couldn't eat something I just ran over. But they didn't even hit it. They saw it. I think he, yeah, he, he, it's not It's not determined whether he ran it over or someone recently ran it over. I, I don't <laughs> think he hit it. I think he just saw it. Hi, Richard. This is your dad. Your mother and I just ate my ham. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Well, I told you I watched Richard's wedding, which was really lovely. Yeah. And uh, his sister's beautiful. Yeah. How is it that family like never gotten like rabies or some? You know how they always go like like they eat tons of They're raccoons. They're immune to everything. Yeah, it's like what you mean. You found the raccoon on the side of the road, which probably means it had rabies because or they usually sick. Yeah, yeah, right. It couldn't run. Oh. Hey, Richard, this is your dad. Nice I'm, fresh one. I'm foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Just got seven shots in my stomach. Like he would become a, a werewolf. If right. He, he, right. He should be bitten by a werewolf when yeah. he's out in the woods. It's fucking great. <laughs> But I do love your dad, you know? I mean, like, 
Yeah, so thank he's keeping you. it real at least, you know. And I think I'm not exactly positive. They know a lot about how to cook this stuff, but I think you can cook out rabies. Yeah, you you cook that. out rabies. Hi, <laughs> uh, Richard. This is your dad. We didn't cook out the rabies. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be dying now. And it's funny because when you watch Richard's wedding, the parents are healthy and yeah, robust. Yeah, they look wonderful and, yeah. and normal. You know what's worse than rabies, even though in some of these animals, is tapeworms. Uh, yeah. Like me and uh, my buddy uh, in high school found a found a uh, rabbit out in the wild and he was cleaning it we were out camping and we were just going to cook our own food and he pulled a tapeworm out that was literally seven oh. feet long oh my goodness. so what does that mean i've you never ate rabbit you, since did you get rid of the rabbit when you see that uh i did he still cooked it and ate it oh but my god I, fucking hillbillies it's but great. tapeworms scare the hell out of me yeah, I think All they right. should look like the whites of, you know, in that documentary, but oh, they look yeah. normal. But if you cook the meat, uh, I'm just asking, doesn't that kill off the tapeworm and anything? Yeah, if you it cook should. it at the right yeah, time. But you're eating yeah. tapeworm yeah. if you don't yeah. take it out of there. What's the matter? What do you got against tapeworm? I mean, if you eat a fucking <laughs> raccoon, you might as well eat a tapeworm. Hey, Protein. Jason, maybe what Jason should eat a tapeworm. Like? Does a tapeworm look like a worm? Yeah, it's well, it's a flat, long white worm. Oh, it's Lord. the grossest Ooh. thing I've ever seen. But I know it's not a vein or something. I wouldn't even know the difference. I'd probably yeah. end up eating it. But yeah, he knew right away. My buddy did. Yeah, wow. it's weird how parents get into what they eat. I mean, your parents are hardcore, but like, like even my dad is like, "Hello, how?" You know, like if I'm sitting there with him, I go, "What do you guys have for lunch?" Well, I go to the yogurt shop. And uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, we have our coffee. We bring it from another place. We don't like the coffee. Um, these people don't make good coffee. Yeah, they, you know, they're Asian people, but uh, they, I don't know what country they're from, but they, they, they don't know how to make hot coffee. And they use very weak coffee. So we, <laughs> we go to another place, we get the coffee, we bring it in there. They don't mind you bringing it in there, Dad? No, 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 you are saying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> bring it in I bring. He brings his own um, bananas and blueberries. The blueberries are very good, but they don't have blueberries or bananas at the yogurt store. Yeah, and, and so you've, yeah, he, I eat mine plain. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would have it with the yogurt, you know, with, with the banana and the uh, blueberry when I go. You go there every day? She goes every day. She, like, like it's a strange. <laughs> she goes every day, but I, I you know, I go, I go when, I, when I can. And he brings his uh, blueberries and banana and a tapa. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 what are you going to do? He's what, going what? to a restaurant with food. Why is that funny, Robin? <laughs> I mean, why, why is tapa why funny? Why are you bringing your food to the restaurant? Oh, they walk in loaded with their... <laughs> He loves the blue, but your father goes and buys his own blueberry. <laughs> you know, he ain't killing roadkill. He's a, you know, no. he's a, your father buys his own blueberries. The little boy I go to the store from Chile. I say to the guy, <laughs> where is it from, from the produce section? I say, where are the blueberries from? They're from Chile. They have very good. And I was reading in the New York Times, they have, uh, but blueberries have a very, very good effect on your on your body, on your system. <laughs> yeah. Antioxidants. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Antioxidants. <laughs> the blueberries are very good, evidently. So I'm glad he eats them. Yeah, I eat those. <laughs> what? I said it's good you eat them. That's what I just said. That it's good that I eat them. Oh, my goodness. So, like, his dad talking about what they eat isn't that weird, the really. Deer, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it, oh, it's way cooler. To ask what the plant locker is, the locker plant. Oh, yeah. Hey, Richard, what's the plant locker? Or the locker plant. I couldn't remember yeah. whether it was locker plant or plant locker. Yeah, what, what's the locker plant? What is that? Your dad brings the deer there to get cut up? or he does? I thought yeah. he did all that all himself. I've seen him on the special. Um, for certain an smaller animals, but oh. for like a deer or something, they'll take it to a meat locker. Oh, oh, I see. And a butcher butchers it? Yeah, like a no. butcher. And they get all the different kinds of meat. And you can tell them you want summer sausage, you want steaks, you want hamburger, and they'll make it. Oh, they that do it all. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's no. really cool. Yeah, but then your dad's paying a lot of money for Like, why doesn't you just go to the supermarket at that point? I thought the whole idea was to not spend money. Well, because I don't think at the supermarket you can buy all that different stuff. They so, won't have deer sausage. What do you yeah. have to pay the butcher to butcher a deer? I think it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. I, I have no Would idea. It costs as much as just going to a store and buying a steak? I think it's a lot cheaper than going to the store. Yeah. I would imagine probably 50 bucks or 100 bucks for the whole deer. And But they get a lot, ton of meat out of it. It's a weird neighborhood. I picture it like almost like um, the Walking Dead. Like, like all of a sudden some guy runs over a rabbit or something 
And then all of a sudden, like, Richard's dad pulls over, and then 50 other cars pull over, and they start beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> and get to the rabbit. over the rabbit. <laughs> That's my food. <laughs> Son, today I got in a fist fight over a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> well, one time, um, some I know a lot of guys get in fights over stepping in other guys' traps. Yeah. Like, that. We we're my dad and I were out, like, <laughs> raccoon hunting one night. And raccoon. We look look some- at that pride, a <laughs> raccoon. Ooh, look, look at this. I'm good eating with some taters. <laughs> <laughs> and we we hear some like scream and yelp off in the distance and we go to check it out and this guy he knew stepped in a, a trap mm-hmm. like a, a coyote trap or something and so somehow the guy who set the trap came out too and they got in a fight over like his wow. traps being in the wrong spot you're supposed to put traps in only a certain area yeah, yeah, so like that stepping in a landmine. people don't step in. Yeah, so yeah. people don't step in. Some guy's guess, foot yeah. was all fucked up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it> just pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it mostly just pissed him off. I don't think it really wow. cut it him hurt. Off. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> it's crazy out there, man. And you were asking about how, like, if you stumble upon some roadkill or something. I think. You can tell if it's still warm. I guess maybe my dad just feels it. You go out there and check the temperature. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he walks around with a thermometer or something. <laughs> Richard, this is your dad. I got my finger in a squirrel's ass. I'm feeling his temperature. Uh, He's warm. Yeah. We're bringing our friend's foot to the meat locker plant. We're going to cut it up. He got caught in a trap. <sighs> What's the grossest thing you ever saw your dad do? Like, like eat? What, what, what does he ever eat like like a zombie? Like eat raw meat? Like just like eat? Just take a just bite tear out of it off the bone? <laughs> no, just tear I don't think it. he's ever been that hungry. That'd be unbelievable, <laughs> right? Just skip with cooking it and everything. Just eat it. <laughs> probably the one of the grossest thing is uh, probably uh, bull balls, mountain oysters. Ooh. Like seeing those raw bulls, uh. bulls balls. Yeah. yeah, which I've eat them. You fry them up and they're pretty good. What do they do? They kill a bull and then slice off his bowl? No, just when they they neuter them or or whatever you call oh, it. Oh, so the bull doesn't even have to die for this one. No, they and just cut his, nuts his balls. Off. Yeah. Wow, that's hardcore. Like, yeah. has he ever neutered the bull by himself? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's dangerous. You got to put them in a pen and stuff. So and, where does he get bull balls? Uh, well, just from local farms around there yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. he'll stop off and go. You got you, you got, got any bull, bull balls? <laughs> Hey, Richard, this is your dad. Went over to the Jinsby farm, and they uh, they they just had just neutered some bulls. Like, do you see him? Like, Maybe bulls, he just walks around in fields looking for bull balls. Like, when, when a farmer cuts his neighbor's, you know, bull, when a farmer cuts the bull's balls off, does he contact people and say, look, I, I just did this if anybody wants Or is there a sign them? on the road? I, yeah, I like, think Like, will you they, see signs out there, like, you say, bulls, bull, fresh bulls balls? Well, that's how we found out about Tradio. There's, you know, when I was growing up, there's a radio show where people right. call in and i'm pretty sure they call up and they'll just let people know hey we got some nuts over here right. you know at oh, the christie farm and what do you do what'd your dad do with them like when you get them are they in a scrotum uh they're they're just literally two round things with they're real veiny oh, and stuff oh my god and, like two, uh, but two I mean, membranes where's the, where's the sack where's the like ball sack uh they don't cut the they slit open the sack and take out, and the, take out the inside and they of show the, back the balls no i think they're just flat you oh know? fuck they just sew back the scrotum. Boy, yeah, am I glad? Empty. I am so glad I'm not a bull. <laughs> oh, that's vile. They just like they just like slice the sack, let them fall out, and then they just leave the sack open. I'm pretty Doesn't sure. Doesn't it get infected? That's no, no I, they clean them up. I think they clean it up and it just heals. So I mean, you, they do the same thing to horses. They do it to yeah. you. Do it to dogs and cats. Yeah, but don't they sew them up afterwards? Yeah, they sew up the place where they took them out. Right, but they don't on a bull. He's saying. Yes, oh, they, they might. They might. I'm not exactly. I've never actually seen it done. Yeah. Oh, they do sew it up. Oh, I would, they have I would to. imagine. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. They just leave it. No, because they get all dirty and everything. Can you eat a rectum? <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't take that. Hey, Richard, this is your dad. We're having <laughs> anus with taters tonight. Mashed taters. Raccoon <laughs> ass. Right. Can you eat the ass? <laughs> you probably could. Yeah. I don't know that it's there's much tough. of a taste. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it tastes plenty. What do you mean there's no taste? A muddy taste. Oh. <laughs> wow. Like when you when you cut open a raccoon, do you see the like, shit inside its intestinal tract? Yeah, yeah. And what do you do with the shit? Oh, you just throw it, it away. Do you, do, ever do you fry throw it? away the intestines? Yeah, you don't want it. I Can mean, you fry the intestines? people eat chitlins. Yeah, that's what I'm pretty sure that's what chitlins. And chitlins is. have shit in them, then, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah. would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they gave the slaves to eat. Mm-hmm. 
They probably. I guess if you just cook it good enough, you don't. Here's taste some. The shit. Uh, here we're gonna eat. Um, uh, we're gonna eat dinner now. And you slaves that have been working the fields all day, here's some um, skin with shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> wow, being a slave owner must have been fucking hardcore. Rub those out really good. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. I was asking you about your dad and what they eat and stuff, but maybe I'm done. I don't know. Well, it's, you know, I, one of my most vivid memories of being a kid and, and kind of growing up on a farm and stuff was my dad would go raccoon hunting, and part of his income was from selling the furs of raccoons and stuff. And right. we'd go For to black this. Black people, right? Because black people love raccoons. They would eat the, the meat. The, the, the right. carcass. Right. He would, the furs he sells to yeah. who? The fur, the fur, like fur dealers yeah. and stuff. And, and there was this old, scary-looking barn. Like, it looked like out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. We'd go to in Missouri, and you walk in, and it was just hundreds of furs, but, like, fresh ones. And it was the worst smell I've ever uh. smelled in my life. Would you ever, like... like like, you know, Richard's dad, we know he's a nice guy and everything. But if you don't, if you look at him, he could be a little scary. And, and like... So you're some black guy, and this guy knocks on your door, you know, Richard's dad, and he goes, hey, I just killed a raccoon. You want to buy it from me? Well, like, I don't think he went door to door, did yeah, he? Yeah, he did. No, no, not door to door, especially not There's in... There's a special place to go to sell raccoons to black people, right? Yeah, I think I think um, a lot of them would come to... He worked for the railroad, mm -hmm. and he'd go to Kansas City to work, and they would just know to come to him. He was kind of like the He was dealer. the raccoon guy. He yeah. was the raccoon guy. yeah. Like this, some, this man have some very good raccoon. You looking for raccoon? You go to this guy. Yeah, this is the man who you go to. It's top quality raccoon. It's like a, man. like a drug dealer. You just know where they're at somehow. And the black people couldn't kill their own raccoons. What was the problem? They live there? in the they city. They live in the city. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and he'd bring all the ra how would he bring all the raccoons with him because he didn't know how many he'd sell. So. Would he keep them in a cooler? Uh, yeah, in a cooler. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the carcass. Hey, Richard, this is my cooler. <laughs> and he'd have to leave the feet on yeah. so that the people knew they weren't getting ripped off because some people would go up to the city mm. and try to sell cats, oh, that's like so skinned cool. cats. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, it was bad. Cats. But people would try to do that. They would try yeah. to sell these people like skin. And so His they father was very honest. He yeah, the raccoon. Feet feet on yeah so they'd know but even still like you like you see some guy sitting there and like he's the raccoon man and like you're like where did he get this raccoon some of it could have been roadkill for god's sake i'm sure it was yeah. but you can smell it if it's roadkill and it's been sitting there for a while it'll have a real stink to it <laughs> yeah i can tell the different stinks it stinks period <laughs> uh, all my food stinks <laughs> when, when he would eat the balls though when he'd eat the so he'd go over and say hey let's have like would he say to your mom I'm thinking maybe some bulls. I'm feeling balls. like yeah. some bulls tonight. <laughs> and like he'd go out balls. and he'd go out and score them, right? Uh, well, no, it was kind of a treat. Like we just hear about somebody having them, and and it wasn't something you planned out. Like I want balls, and then we go get them. It was just like, oh, Farmer Jeff has and some balls. Eat it, huh? Yeah. How Farmer big Je are they? They're pretty good size. Farmer you know, Jeff has some balls. And then you, what do you do with the balls when you get them home? You have to wash them? Uh, you wash them and then you fry them. You just put them in oil. Do they slice them up or are they big? No, they're... they're I, I think you would want to chop those up like I, into some sort of, sort of stew. To, I think you chop them up, but they're still pretty good size. Really? You, I think you can get two or three, you know, chopped up pieces out of one ball. And even have like a full load in them? <laughs> Like sperm? <laughs> like oh, a creamy God. center. Hey, well, I got an extra bonus. <laughs> I got some jism. <laughs> some <Ugh>. dessert. <laughs> right? Don't balls have sperm? Uh, they should. They, I think uh, that's where it's made. I would well, imagine cook it that cooks out. out. Like, yeah. Cook them out like a tapeworm. <laughs> you know what that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a big thing at bars, too, in Kansas. I, I know a lot of bars, like on Wednesdays, they'll have a uh, fry. How long does it take your mom to fry up bulls balls? Like, I mean, like, is it... Not, not not long, long at all. Yeah. It's like frying catfish. And what do they put on them? Like sauce? Yeah, you can you you kind of bat, put a batter on them, kind of like Are they tough? So they're catfish. Like bread fried. They're a little something? tough. If you've ever had a gizzard, I think, or a, <laughs> no, or a, <laughs> you know, like a, a liver or a gizzard of a chicken, it's kind of like mm, that. Disgusting. Yeah, but they're hey, good. That's the taste. And what do you eat that with? Oh, uh, French fries or something. Sure, taters. <laughs> balls and fries. We're having some balls and some fries. How many? Some like, cock. Two, you eat it with cock. Two nice sized bulls. Balls. Like, would that feed a family of four? No, no. You need that's, three or you, four. No, you'd probably need twenty or thirty. Oh, yeah. really? For yeah. a family of four? Mm hmm. Oh, so would your dad bring home like thirty bulls? Balls? Uh, uh yeah, I remember them you just bringing want some 10 people or having that delicacy and you not. You know, mm -hmm. everyone has to share. Yeah. 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 Every human fingernails. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Richard, this is your dad. We just had pig anus casserole for dinner. <laughs> it was really good with some french fries. Pig, all right, talk to you later. Pig balls you can eat, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's hog disgusting. Balls. It's all disgusting, but hog you know what? Balls. It's the way it is, man. The worst thing I ever ate, though, is pickled pig's feet. I don't can know you eat you a penis? Can you eat the actual penis of yeah, an animal? Yeah, is anybody eating you that? Can. It's pretty tough, as far as I know. But you've eaten it? Have you ever eaten a raccoon's penis? No. Hmm. No. Hmm. That's a nickname for an Arkansas toothpick. That's what they call it. Right. Because I guess in the olden days, people use them as toothpicks. The penis. But, yeah. Can you eat <laughs> vagina? Like, is that meaty? Like, have you ever eaten, like, a pig vagina? I think they're small, so I don't know if it would be yeah. much of a meal. I just wonder, like, what... What, what are you eating? Hey, yeah. Richard, just had pig vagina Joes. <laughs> <laughs> You know one of the craziest things they do with a, a, a bullcock is they make canes out of them. You know, yeah. a bullcock, when it's inside the bull, is like five feet long. Wow. So you can get a cane that's made... You're turning Robin on. Calm down. <laughs> Maybe I'll get her one for feet. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, just had some deer pussy lips. <laughs> Your mom and I did. They were good. <laughs> you had deer pussy lips? That's right. We just had deer pussy lips. <laughs> yeah, you got a dough. What are you going to do with that? Yeah, B Pussy lips are good. They're rubbery. I mean, not too rubbery, but spicy, too. We just had squirrel taint. Mm, an ox penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Yes. And I can saw a tooth. I can have them send some no, of this and we can right. do a feed. How long does here. a deer last? I mean, can that last them all winter? Sure. Pretty much, yeah. 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 <laughs> they pretty much live on that and uh, catfish. My dad catches a ton of catfish. Cunt. A, a cunt of a cunt. Cunt, yeah. <laughs> cunt of catfish. Cunt. 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 Yeah. I thank you. You've, got, thank you've you. said enough. Hey. Hey. Country living, man. <laughs> cunt. Tree living. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, Howard makes it almost a mockery of the way your life once was. You know, he doesn't understand it. He makes a joke out of it. But do you long for those days? I mean, do you I miss them? Uh, no, because I love the restaurants in New York, and I love, you know, like a good steak and, and good Italian food in New York and killer pizza and all that. But I'm glad that I grew up that way. I'm very happy that I got to experience a lot of that stuff and it's great memories that I have and I, I love it. I love that it's I live in a place where that's very different because that conversation we just had on the air in Kansas nobody would think that anything's wrong with that. Nobody would blink a pig's eye at something. Exactly. Like you know you hear about raccoon penis and, and it's just another just another day on the farm. Why do you appreciate or love the way you grew up so much? Just because you're your family was so self-reliant? Yeah, yeah, to just... Live off the land? Yeah, it kind of teaches you to be tough and to appreciate what you have and appreciate nature and, and you know, to live off the land. It, it really makes you appreciate the earth, pretty much. Do you think uh, your East Coast friends are, are soft? Do you think we're, we're very weak people? No, not soft, because, hell, you know, go to the Bronx or Jamaica, Queens, nobody's soft out there, you know. it's There's some tough, a lot of tough uh, New Yorkers and big city people, but it's just a different, you know, different kind of tough, I guess, you know. If if the grid goes down, uh, I'm gonna go go stay with my parents. Well, they'll have plenty to eat and plenty to do. Now, give me your favorite, your all-time favorite redneck meal, like your authentic Kansas meal that you know your dad caught. Uh, my all-time favorite is probably raccoon sloppy joes, barbecued raccoon sloppy joes. They're so it's so good. It's a little gamey, but. A good type of gaming. And what on the side? Uh, and squirrel cock on the side. <laughs> squirrel cock soup. So raccoon sloppy joes and some squirrel cock. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, and taco tico on the side. What about for dessert? For dessert? Um, oh, gooseberry pie. Gooseberry pie is awesome. Mama Christie's? Yeah, Mama Christie's gooseberry pie. You can't beat that. Mm, mm. Mm, with some sugar on top. Mm. Wash Sounds it. like some good eating. Yeah, hell yeah. Wash it all down with the Milwaukee's best and, and that's some good eating. Well, all right, all right. <laughs> Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>